Well, 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 welcome everybody to a very merry -ish Christmas to you. Um, this is Lake Season Seasons Greetings, the DLC of Seasons Greetings. It actually came out a month ago. Um, it's based around, I guess you could say, before the main story of Lake, as we take on the role of the father. And um, if you haven't seen this game before, it's called Lake. It's a really cool game. Um, if you like story-based games where there is like a few different outcomes, uh, depending on the choices you make, um, it's not too long of a game. It's about a six to seven hour game, uh, but there's really, 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 really cool vibes uh, with this game. And you, you, you are Meredith. You are a person named Meredith, and she is a corporate. Um, well, she grew up in the small town, and then she went off to a big city to pursue her corporate life. Turns out she didn't really like corporate life, and she moved back home uh, to pursue a career in as a postman or postwoman uh, to follow in her father's footsteps. And uh, she found out that the simple life was something she really, really enjoyed. Um, and so what we're going to be playing today is the DLC. It's called Season's Greetings. Um, and in this, we will be playing as Meredith's dad. I do not know the story. Uh, this is all going to be new to me and whatnot. If you are watching this in the VOD, I'll make sure to uh, add a pinned comment down below. And you can check out the Lake series that I did uh, uh, going through Meredith's story and things like that. And you can uh, watch the whole complete series and see the whole story for yourself unfold. And then you can come back and watch the season's greeting if you want to. But yeah, this is going to be Season's Greeting. Um, it shouldn't be too long of a DLC. I am expecting it to be maybe around three to four hours. Um, and that should be that. But uh, I'm very excited. I really I really adore this game. I think this game came out uh, in 2021. So it came out a couple years ago. Uh, but it's a really nice, cozy like game. And if you like nostalgia, um, especially like, uh, like, like 90s, 80s era nostalgia, um, you'll definitely like this game for sure. Anyways, welcome. Hope you are all, ha all having a wonderful day. Uh, Merry Christmas Eve to everyone uh, and Merry Christmas to everyone else. And if you don't celebrate uh, Christmas, then happy freaking Sunday or happy Monday and happy holidays to you and happy new year and all that good stuff. It's a pleasure not to be with you today. Welcome in everybody. How are you? What's going on? Hello, Lisa loves pie. Hello, Jefferson. Hello, Malachi. Hello, Spork. Hello, Phoenix. Welcome in Susie T. Hello. Welcome in. Hello, Nico. How are you, Nico? Good to see you. Welcome in. Jonathan, good to see you. Hello, Maggie Mae. Hello, Fredneck Teddy. Welcome in. Welcome in. Good to see you. Hello, Amanda Rain. Howdy. How are you? Hello, Elaine. Glory Stars. Melissa, welcome in. Marta, how are you? Marta. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, Jay. Hello, Kirsty. Welcome in. Welcome in, Alexander. Hello, hello, Shantae. Yes, it's me. Good to see you. It's me. Hello, <laughs> Julie. Hello, Julie. Brian. Hello, Brian. And Sandra. Thank you for the nine months. Good to see you. Merry Christmas. How are you? Good to see you. Welcome in. Thank you for the nine months. I appreciate you. Thank you for the support. Good to see you as well. Hello, Beeman. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Tabby. Welcome in. Hello, Betty. You're good. Good to see you. Hello, Glory Stars. Hannah. Sturbix, good evening to you. Yes, Crush Cupcake. Hello, Crush Cupcake. Welcome in. Monkey King, hello. And everybody uh, smirking, lurking, and hopefully you're not working on this Christmas Eve or Christmas uh, morning, depending on where you are. Hello, Hard Dig. How's it going? Welcome in. Hello, Ruth. Welcome in. Yeah, and Warhog. How are you, Warhog? How do you do? Yes, good to see you. Yeah, uh, this game also is on console. So if you want to pick this game up, you can also play it on console too. Uh, this game is mostly uh, playable with your controller. So you can play it with controller, controller, keyboard, or mouse. I'm going to be playing with the keyboard and mouse today. Um, and I'm very excited to, to jump in with this season's greetings. Uh, so if you want to switch, you can definitely, definitely switch uh, between the regular version and the season's greetings. I figured this is a very, um, uh, what would you say, a good way to kind of uh segue into christmas um I, there's not like a lot of like christmas kind of themed games out there that you can kind of play luckily we have this so yeah this will be a one and done kind of thing and that will be that uh, hello simply nothing how are you harris from paris hello harris from paris welcome in hello dapper wolf good to see you welcome in as well yeah 
Okay, without further ado, um, let's jump into Season's Greetings. Now, okay, if you don't know the story, you don't know who Meredith is, and, you don't, and you're not really familiar with the game, that's all right. I don't think you really need to know uh, the base game uh, storyline. I think you can really just enjoy what it's worth uh, through the DLC also. So I don't think you really need to know. It, it's good to know like a little bit of a backstory, but you can still, um, you can still enjoy it nonetheless. Oh my gosh, here we go. That's so cool. New game. <clears throat> Hello, why so serious? Welcome in. Good to see you. Now, I will not know, um, like volume and all that. Uh, hopefully, volume is okay. I kind of messed. I kind of tinkered with the settings beforehand, so hopefully that's fine. We'll have to see, though. Yeah, we'll have to see. <clears throat> Uh, hello? <laughs> um, I don't know if this is a loading screen or if this is a let's go screen. Uh, welcome. Bring it in. Did I already break it? <laughs> Did I break it? Hey! It is a nice deer. Yeah. It is. Um. <clears throat> uh, let's just, uh, <clears throat> let's close that down for a sec. Let's, uh, let's pivot. Hello. <laughs> let's relaunch it real quick. There we go. Okay. Oh, God. oh my lord. Uh Wow. Hello Riley. How are you, Riley? Hello, Renee. Welcome in. Okay. Um, um There we go. That's what's supposed to happen right there. That's what's supposed to happen. There you go. Alright, we fixed it. Alright, welcome to Lake Seasons Greetings, everyone. Enjoy. Uh, and I uh, hope you have a wonderful holiday. Indeed. Indeed. All righty. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be a can stream if I can't just break it now, can I? All right. I'll keep an eye on the volume, though. We'll see. We'll see. I might need to turn it up. Hello. Hey, Dad. How's that white Christmas looking? You promised, remember? Oh, Meredith, of course, it's coming down as we speak. Wait till you see it. Great. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Uh, my plane lands Tuesday at 5.30. Perfect. How will you get here? Will someone pick you up? Obviously. I've got the best chauffeur around. His name starts with a T and ends with Amos Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I hear he's the best in the business. I'll make sure he's there. 5.30 sharp. Oh, thanks, Dad. See you soon. Two more nights, Em. <laughs> Can't wait to see you. Same here. Say hi to Mom for me. Bye, Dad. Bye, Em. Have a safe trip. Monday, December 23rd morning. All right. Good morning, Thomas. I bet you woke up feeling like a million dollars after winning that monster pot last night. Morning, Frank. It felt like $96.40, actually. <laughs> Whoa. But yeah, I had a great night's sleep. Eye roller. <laughs> I bet. It looks like you've hit the jackpot again today. There's hardly any Christmas mail rush because of the snow. Well, that and Amazon hasn't been uh, introduced to the world yet, so that's good. Uh, the sooner I can stretch out by the fire, the better. I don't mind being outside in the snow. Uh, <clears throat> fire. Ah, great. The sooner I can stretch out by the fire, the better. Ha! That's a strategy right out of my playbook. Take it easy out there today. Okay. All right. Hello, Kim. How are you? Hello, Donster. Welcome in. All right. So here we are. Uh, we are in. We are ready to go. We are Thomas. 
and uh, we're going to be delivering some package packages this uh, holiday season. I am covering the minimap. I don't think it really matters if I'm covering the minimap. Um, yeah, I think we'll be okay. Why does Thomas look... This looks like the smallest mail truck of all time. All right, very well. He looks big. Robin and Zokes, good morning. I guess I wasn't the only one that noticed all that white stuff lying around. I beg your pardon? I now have enough PO positive and pet thieves about snow to last me a lifetime. But don't let that stop you from calling in new ones. My answer machine can handle it. PO positive or pet thieves? We're starting off with the jingle. With PO snow positive from Cheryl. Jack, we all love the beautiful snowy scenery. But there's one thing I like even better. The sound. Or actually lack thereof. Fresh snow absorbs sounds creates a tranquility that is just sublime. Believe it or not, Cheryl, even a loud mouth like me can appreciate a bit of silence every now and then. And, judging by the weather, we can enjoy it for a little while longer. We've got some bright but cold days coming up with a chance of snow later in the week. And now, music. Now, one thing about this game is, uh, if you play the base game, and you've never played the base game, like I said, you play as this uh, gentleman's daughter, and uh, there is a massive, like, a nice little love story to this game. Um, and you actually get to what? Oh, crap. What is this? Hang on a sec. I forgot that I have to actually be a mailman for a sec. Uh, close this for a sec. Hang on. Uh, what is this? This is, uh, what street is this? Sorry. Sorry. This is the Bookin, Bookum, uh, Bookum Dano, Bookum Dano. This is 300 Main Street. Um... There's a bit of romance in this game, and there's actually a way to choose uh, through your main, not this, but obviously with the main game. Um, there's a way to, like, choose who you want to romance in the town, too. So there's that kind of element as well. So if you like Christmas that kind gift? of thing, you yeah, like a story, hoping. you like a romance story, uh, That this is the kind of game that delivers that, and it's really cool. Anyways, here we are. Merry Christmas, hello! Good to see you. Welcome in. Hey, Beth. How are you on this fine day? Hello, Beth. Thomas, hi. Well, business as usual. No, I'm just joking. The situation is not that dire. <laughs> hmm. No Mildred rummaging for discounts today. Hmm. Sales can't be banned with the holidays around the corner, am I right? <laughs> I was going to say, sales can't be bad with the holidays around the corner, right? Times have been better, I suppose, but you're right. I'm not complaining. Besides Mildred, there's been an odd customer or two today, and would you believe one of them was even looking for a full set of encyclopedias? Hmm. Oof. Even who even reads those? That's like thirty books. Encyclopedias. I think Amanda reads it. Those. I'm pretty sure. <sighs> who even reads those? That's like thirty books. I know they're wonderful. I even owned three sets at one point. But then I'll be the first to admit that a set of encyclopedias is nothing less than a veritable treasure trove of information at one's fingertips. By the way, did you know that the world's largest encyclopedia was created in 15th century China? I, wow. And comprised about 11,000 books? Jeez. Isn't that fascinating? Imagine having to load that into your car. <laughs> okay. Um... I don't think my trusty old van could take that. Wow, we're getting like borderline euphemism here. Uh, I'm starting to relate. I'm still holding this delivery. I'll take you up on that there, uh, Beth. <laughs> I don't think my trusty old van could take that. <laughs> or my bookcase for that matter. Well, they do say a good book is easy to pick up, but hard to put down. Get it? <laughs> How's Emily coming along with Christmas dinner, by the way? I can imagine she's pretty excited about Meredith coming over. So let me know if she needs any more cookbooks. I've got this beauty from Good Housekeeping that's all the rage right now. Hmm. I'm going to have to have my pants let out just looking at... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to have my pants let out just looking at the cover? There'll be so much food we'll be eating all week. Oh, we'll do that one. No pants required. I'll be sure to ask her. But you know how Emily gets in the kitchen. 
There'll be so much food, we'll be eating stuffing all week. I suppose you're right. But don't you worry, I'll leave the cookbook. I have a feeling St. Nicholas has other things in store for you this year. Okay. Okay, looking forward to it already, I guess. Or, yeah, sure. <laughs> looking forward to it already. As well you should. Hmm. What does St. Nick have in store for you this year? And what does St. Yeah. Nick have in store for you this year? Doing anything special? I'm flying out to Georgia tomorrow mm. to spend Christmas with my Daniel and his wife for a few days. We're planning a Hawaii Five-0 marathon. It's my guilty pleasure, and luckily it's theirs too. Dano, give him my best wishes when you see him. Ah, Dano, give him my best when you see him. And his wife, of course. I shall. Right. I better get back to it and get ready for the New Year's sale. I've been in a perpetual fight with my pricing gun lately, so I need all the time I can get. And good things come to those who wait. I'll bring over your presents later in the week. I hope you have a Merry Christmas Eve tomorrow and give my love to Emily and Meredith. Will do. And season's greetings to you two. So the one thing also about this game, it, it is an indie game. And one thing that was really impressive when I first played Lake um, is the voice acting. You don't get a lot of voice acting during, um, uh, during you know, um, these little indie projects. And it, it's awesome to see uh, the voice acting go through the base game, but also having the voice acting come on over through the DLC a couple years later, right? And as you can see, there's a lot of references in this game too uh pause uh oh my god the bat in the hat that is literally almost that is by dr seuss apparently the bat in the hat so that's sick um without spoiling too much about this game the wizards also by ronald dill um the cat pajamas oh my gosh without spoiling too much about this game uh there is a there's a love interest in this game look at pet cemetery or pal cemetery by Steven Singh. Uh, there's a there's a romance character in the base game when you play as Meredith, and the and the one of the romanceable characters owns a video store right down the street here, and it's she can you can actually go ahead and romance her, become like girlfriend, and I think maybe even uh, run away, not run away, but like run away with love uh, with the owner of the video store. So it's kind of like an old school blockbuster. We might be actually visiting that today. Uh, actually, we are going to be visiting that today. So without me just talking about it, let me just take you there instead. We'll just do that instead of me trying to explain something that I guess is kind of irrelevant right now. But yeah, it's I don't know. Not a lot of like 80s styles game, 80s styles. Yeah, 80s style era uh, games are out there in a full fledged like story mode with voice acting and bunch of references and so on and so forth right like who wants to go into the freaking blockbuster yeah absolutely what is this this is uh, uh 351 parcel, main street thomas, don't forget the parcel don't talk to yourself thomas you'll freak everybody out 351 main street please uh here we go perfect okay let's get this to its destination this is the woman i was talking about that you can romance Christmas barrel <laughs> they changed oh they did change the posters in here for the DLC also and they changed some of the the movies in here for the uh for the DLC too wow cool 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 yeah she yeah Angie I, that's right her name's Angie she's a doll hello Angie long time no see uh, one package for you today thanks Thomas how's Emily She's very busy. The motel's chronically understaffed. Uh, other than hating the snow, she's doing just fine. Um, even back in the 80s, they were understaffed. Uh, yeah, she's very busy. Uh, she's very busy. The motel's chronically understaffed. Mm -mm. Ah, yes. This must be busy season at the motel. I do like it when out-of-towners come to visit our little hamlet. Especially when they like movies. <laughs> Apparently hey, Freya. most of the rooms have been fitted with VCRs now. Should be good for business. 
So, what do we have here? Uh, she's gonna hate the 21st century. Oh, right. Hey, Summer Sunshine. Hey, Highlander. How's it going? Hmm. Sounds like you got a hefty tax bill. Uh, how would we know? Are we snooping? So, what do you have there? Let's uh, just ask her, or maybe not ask her what she has. Let's just say, you all right? You okay there, Angie? It's just some things from L.A. <sighs> Toiletries, stuff like that. I, um recently ended my relationship oh um i'm sorry uh, angie i'm so sorry it's fine it was my decision and it was the right decision the long distance thing just wasn't working out still seeing your spare toothbrush that shampoo bottle a stick of deodorant it just makes it so definite you know like the LA chapter of my life is now finally completely closed. Your ex sent you uh, your deodorant, your toothbrush. Honestly, just throw it away. Why waste the post-it? Okay. Uh, breaking up right before Christmas Eve must be tough. I'll leave you alone with your thoughts. Or how did you, how did your ex take it? Um... Breaking up before Christmas Eve must be tough. Thomas Sunshine became a member. Hey, thank you, Lorianne, for the gift of membership. I appreciate that. Thank you. Big ups to you. Breaking up right before Christmas Eve must be extra tough. Yeah, that does add to the melancholy. Timing isn't exactly my strong suit, I guess. Hmm. How did your ex take it? Sounds like you're dealing with it like a champ, though. How did your ex take it? My ex-girlfriend, you mean? Yeah, oh. she's handling it okay. Other than the passive-aggressive shipping of toiletries, I guess. <laughs> Again, oh, why? Did you not know? It seems, to me, it seems kind of a little petty. <laughs> Here. Ah! Uh, you break up with me, I send you your toothbrush and your deodorant stick. How dare you? Ah, <sighs> surely it's none of my concern. Uh, to be honest, I did have an inkling wasn't sure though had no idea but i mean it's fine either way right mm. surely it's none of my concern <laughs> well surely it's none of my concern <laughs> i mean it's not exactly something i walk around advertising around here <laughs> this is probably the first time i've seen you blush well i'll leave you alone with your thoughts <laughs> and your spare toothbrush Merry Christmas, Angie. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Thomas. My toothbrush and I bid you adieu. Adieu. Hello, Swisha. Hello, Martine. Welcome what? in. Welcome Sorry. in. Hello, Lissa Lou. Welcome in. And uh, thanks for subscribing, Robin. Appreciate that. Yeah, there's a lot of different uh, references they have in this one. For sure. Compared to the base game, there's still a, a, there still is like some reg regular ones like the wacky, which is the rocky. They have the uh, brunch bunch. Uh, they have the odd father, right? Nineteen candles, the gremlins, the Ghostbusters references. Very good. In Chaos One became a member. Hey, in Chaos, thank you for becoming a member as well. Appreciate you. Thank you for that. Thank you for the generosity. Very kind of you. Big ups to you. Hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful evening. Spare toothbrush and deodorant returned. It's just like pity. <laughs> like why? Ah, look at the Christmas lights here. Nice. This is what, 302 Jackson Jackson Street? Alright. There we go. Kinda pull in. There we are. 301 Jackson Street. 301 grab a little bit of something here uh i'm sorry this is not 301 jackson street uh oh wait this is a mail sorry this is mail 301 this is not a package this is mail right 303 sorry 303 sorry uh three uh something else I'm the worst mailman of all time. 302? 302. There you go. Fancy handwriting on this one. 
There you go. We need to see we weren't wearing our glasses. That's the problem here. Put your glasses back on there, Thomas. That's the problem. All right. I got to I got to remember there's also letters. Uh packages don't make the world go around. Also letters make the world go around too. Coming out. I just ran through a stop sign. That is terrible. Should probably uh, be careful about that. Oh, look at the reindeer on the street lights too. Let's go ahead and turn right here. There we are. Oh, and by the way, you can also pull up the map in this game. The map is pretty big. So this is where we're at right now at the top. And you can go a clear across the entire lake here. Hence the name Lake. You can see your letters, your parcels and things like that. Uh, there's like this little tiny like neighborhood off to the off over the bridge that we're going to and then we'll wrap all the way around uh which i think this right here at the bottom is the motel so our wife might be there maybe potentially we'll have to see but yeah this is one of those cozy games you just kind of relax chill out listen to a story interact with the story and deliver mail i mean what what else could you ask for? This is definitely like cozy vibes for sure. Yeah. Hello, Charlie. How are you, Charlie? Okay, let's go. <laughs> Better drive than my mailman. He doesn't even blink at the stop sign at my house. Mighty <laughs> Ambrose River. Ambrose River. All frozen over. Wow, 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 wow. We got to be more careful. We got to be way more careful. There's our house, I believe, right? Yeah, I think that's our house. Walnut Drive is where Meredith's school friend Jesse used to live. I remember once Meredith came home from school after learning about walnuts. And she asked us that they were named after the street. <laughs> The thing also about uh, Thomas here is I believe in the story or in the world, this is supposed to be his like uh, farewell. This is supposed to be his retiring year, I believe, as well. Oh, whoa, there's a semi truck. Oh, this isn't good. I parked on the wrong side of the road. I parked on the wrong side of the road. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. If this was a European thing, I'd be better off. I apologize. I apologize, I apologize, I apologize. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Escalante, Escalante, how are you? Welcome in. Good to see you. All right, let's not make that mistake again. I'll park on this side. There you go. <laughs> oh, look at they have reindeer in their yard. First of all, why is the semi truck driving through a neighborhood anyways? You should be on the main road. I disagree with all that. All right, let's go deliver some last two parcels here. It's not like get smashed on the way out here. There we go. Now, I believe there's about three different. Maybe I can't remember if there's two or three different romanceable partners in this game, uh, in the base game. There might be only two i don't know i can't remember it's been so long since i played this game two years but when the game first came out i really really enjoyed it 300 lake road i won't spoil obviously who i ended up choosing to romance you'll have to watch that series for yourself part and parcel <laughs> that's right part and parcel um Oh, you guys are in here. Ghostbusters. Hello. Hi, Ben. Got a pretty hefty package here for you. Ah, uh, thanks, Thomas. I've been waiting for that one. Hi, Mr. W. Please, please, please tell me the mail truck needs a tune-up. <laughs> hey, Lori. I didn't know you'd already begun working here. I'm sorry to say the truck's running like a song. I mean, I mean... Hey, subscriber! Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for subscribing, cop picking. Um... 
No, no, no. I didn't know you were already working here. I didn't know you'd already begun yeah. working here. Weren't you supposed to start in January? Yeah. She pestered me into allowing her to start a week early. Already put snow tires on half the town's vehicles. At this rate, I can retire before the end of next summer. But this truck's fine, Lori. I gave it a checkup for Frank less than ten days ago. Ah, uh, are you sure there's nothing I can improve on the old, um, what do you call this thing again? Uh, I call it a mail truck. I just call it the mail truck, actually. Yeah. Uh, boring. We need to come up with a better name than that. Tell you what, Lori. Maybe you can check out the car horn. It sounded a little off last time I checked. The horn, eh? I'm on it. The horn, eh? Hello, Grenwood. That was easy peasy, lemon squeezy, Mr. W. Hey, that's what I Diaphragm say. Diaphragm had gotten a little dusty, but it's all better now. The mail truck is honking like a big old goose again. Thanks, Lori. Come to think of it, I will be calling your truck the goose from here on out. Big, white, wobbly, and with a honking great horn. Honk, honk. The goose has a nice ring to it, especially if it's like Top Gun. Um, and I will be calling calling it the mail truck. No, let's just let her have her have her moment here. The goose has a nice ring to it, or a nice honk anyway. Well, gotta be getting back to my rounds. Happy holidays, you guys. Thanks, Thomas. You too. <laughs> All right, let's go deliver our last package, which again, I believe is at the motel. Pull out. All right, here we go. Mm, the music in this game is very, uh, I, I would turn it up a little bit louder, but I was already warned that there could be copyright issues. So that's why I'm kind of leaving the volume for the music a little low, at least the radio little low, but the music in this game is very good uh, indeed. Very good. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad, Brian. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad at all. It's just good to have you here watching. <laughs> Is Lori old enough to drive? She seems like a 12 year old. <laughs> she has big dreams. Let's just say she has big dreams. You got yourself a nice cup of hot chocolate in a blanket. Oh, very good. Nice cozy. It is a cozy game for sure. And especially with this DLC holidays. Uh, one of those good things to come for Christmas gaming content for sure this year. Like I said, it's very hard to kind of find that Christmas seasons, holidays, you know, kind of game. Um, just because there's not a lot of like Christmas games out there rightfully so I mean I understand why but it's kind of hard to you know base a, base a game around Christmas but this is the Oregon Trail Motel Motel Hotel Holiday Inn there we go let's grab that yep grab that indeed Christmas gift Here's hoping. Oh, wait, this is the guy that doesn't care, right? He's just chilling. Oh, no. Never mind. This is my wife. So, this is before she hired help, then. Okay, right. Right? This is my wife. I'm pretty sure. Maybe it's not. Emily. No, this is my wife. Come on. Hi there, Mr. Mailman. Got anything for me today? Hello, ma'am. Just one parcel, a special delivery, and a little chant, if you like. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have one special delivery for you, ma'am. And we can have a little chat, if you'd like. Ooh, a little chat. I'm afraid I'm a bit too busy for that, sir. Oh. You sound an awful like... You sound an awful lot like my wife. Hmm... Oh, you sound an awful lot like my wife. I hardly see her these days. Oh, what a shame. Well, you must have a lovely wife. Hmm. 
She looks almost as lovely as you. You can say that again. She's the light of my life. You can say that again. She's the light of my life. Oh. Oh. Oh, I better get this, honey. I'll see you tonight. Oregon Trail Motel. How may I help you? Okay, I was in the middle of, you know. That's fine. We'll 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 catch up later. We'll catch up later. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. How are you so busy? There's like 11 teen rooms. What is so busy about right now? There's no one in the parking lot. You're that busy? It's Christmas. I don't see a damn vehicle in the in the in the parkway, in the driveway, in the whatever way that is. No vacancy sign. Look at it. It's not even lit up. Can't be that busy. Hey, subscriber. Can you? Thanks for subscribing, John. Appreciate it. All right, back to the post office we go. We I think we are done for the day. So we can turn in our coat, turn in our truck, and call it a great day. Nonetheless. A spanner dam. Or as Frank says it. A span, 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 spanner dam. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ah, it never gets old. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello, Romic. How's it going? Hello, Shari Ba. How are you? Welcome in. Hello, Dominique. How are you? Hello, Cece. Hello, T. Welcome. How are you? It's elf season. She must be busy. My four year old, my four year old niece calls 11 11 teen. <laughs> All right, make a left. Thank you. Oh, this is ice cold bait. All right, we're just going to ignore that. Does not have a good uh, turn radius. I got to remember I'm driving in the freaking snow. Hello, Rixie. How are you? Welcome in. I know, right? Oregon Trail Motel. Love it. I know, right? Pretty good. Hello, Shorty. How's it going, Shorty? Coming to the back end here. Yo, you spoke too soon, Spork. You did. You, you might have. You almost spoke too soon, yeah? All right. Turn it to the right. Perfect. That's the station wagon from uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. Anybody watching National Lampoon this year? Pull into the office. Hello. We'll just park it right here, I guess. End the day. Ah, very good. Why is this residence? It's gonna be Meredith. Not from Grey's Anatomy. Hello. Hey, Dad. It is Meredith. I'm Meredith. Are you all packed? She sounds kind of uh, upset. What's up? No bad news, I hope. Meredith, what's up? No bad news, I hope. Um. Meredith. Dad. I'm so sorry, but I won't be able to make it tomorrow. <sighs> Did your flight get canceled? Are you okay? What's wrong? What happened? What's wrong? What happened? Are you okay? I'm fine, Dad. Don't worry. But I'm just... I'm snowed under with work. It's added 86. It needs to be up and running at the start of the new year. I stumbled upon some errors today, and now we need to fix them this week. This sucks. That's actually a pretty good segue to the, uh, to the main story. <sighs> That's such a bummer, but I understand. Sure does. Is that Steve guy pursuing you again? Or pressuring you again? My gosh. Um, no, we'll, we'll just say we understand. As a father figure, we understand. That's such Thank, a bummer. Or father right? figure. We're a father. Uh, I, I Not a understand. figure. I'll make it up to you, I promise. We have all worked so hard this year. Can't squander it all in the last week, right? I I I I I I guess so. You're right, Meredith. Your career lasts as a lifetime. Um 
sounds exactly like what you said last year. Ooh. Um. I hate to say it, but it sounds exactly like what you said last year. Yeah. Have you told your mom yet? Yeah, I just called her at the motel. Oh, someone's calling. It must be your mom. Okay, well, that's my cue. Gotta get back to it. I'll call again soon, Dad. Love you. Hey, Em. Is that you? <laughs> if by Em you mean Emily, then yes. If you mean Em for Meredith, then no. <laughs> <laughs> just got off the phone with the other Em. I just got off the phone with my other Em, so I was pretty sure it was you. <laughs> oh, Thomas. Don't joke around as if nothing's wrong. Um, what else can we do? It's just Christmas. Um, mm, I don't know what to say. I know, um, I don't know what to say. Well, just deal with it, like we always do. Why don't we invite someone else? Unless you're happy with just Mildred coming over. Mildred? Why not ask Nancy too? My goodness gracious, Thomas. What do you got going on here? Um, good idea. I'll think about it. How about that? Yeah. That's a good idea. I'll think about it and maybe invite someone tomorrow. Okay, honey. As long as you don't invite Jack, you know, his jokes may even scare off the turkey. In any case, I'll call Beth and ask her again too. And then I have to do a towel run, refill the vending machine, and vacuum the reception area. So it'll be a while before I'm done. I'll see you tonight, honey. Okay, Em. Drive home safe. Interesting. Hey, Tiana. Hey, Tammy. How's it going? Stay home and watch TV or stay home and read a book. Thomas feels like a stay home and watch TV kind of guy. Magnum P.I. Q. Detective Fries. Ah. You've been assigned a new partner. Ah, oh, come on, Chief. You know I don't need nobody's help. He's from Germany. Hamburg, to be exact. A German? Oh, for Christ's sakes. Stop complaining, Fries. <laughs> go pick up that hamburger from the airport. <laughs> what? I don't know, dude. I don't know. Ah, Tuesday, December 24th in the morning. Wow, there's a lot of packages today. All right, wow. Let's get back out there. Get it going. Just because it's Christmas Morning, Eve. P.O., it's time for a different take on the snowfall. P.O. positive or pet peeves? Take it away, Charles. Jack, I'd like to respond what Cheryl said about the snow yesterday. Sure, it makes everything nice and quiet, but Merry I can't Christmas, Cans and Family. Sound. Purple Heart. Snow beneath our boots. Thank you very much. Sure, we can, Charles. And that's the last one about snow for now. Apologies to the guy with the pet peeve about well, yellow snow. Better luck next time. Today's weather as bright and beautiful as yesterday. Enjoy the crunch, folks. Back to the playlist. Thank you, Jammy Socks, for that. That was very kind. Thank you for the super chat. And thank you for your first ever super chat celebrating it here with us. I appreciate that, too. Big shout out to you. Thank you very much. That was very kind. And Merry Christmas to you and your family. I got to see the address to this place real quick. My mind must be on Christmas break already. I forgot the package. I did not forget the package. I was trying to find the address. It just says Main Street. I guess maybe, is there only one package on Main Street today? Maybe there might be only one package on Main Street. Let's see. Thomas, don't insult me. I'm the one 207, okay, Main Street. Okay, yeah, there's only one package on Main Street. Very well. Thank you. Okay, let's get this to its destination. Sorry, ma'am. You can honestly go around. My truck's not in the way. General store. Hello? That's so nice. Hello. Yeah, I think this game is also based around an organ, too. As you can see the big posters. <laughs> Greetings, Nancy. 
Hello, Thomas. That should be the last batch of Christmas pudding ingredients. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, is it for you or the store? Mm, sounds good. Is it for you or for the store? For the store, of course. I'm not going to change my cooking schedule just because of Christmas. I don't know. Is cooking a big deal in Christmas for some of y'all? Christmas for us in our family is not. We don't really do a lot of cooking. We really kind of have like an hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres. We have maybe like finger foods. That's pretty much all we have as far as like family and that goes. Like finger foods and then most spending time together and um, and um, just like opening presents and stuff. Uh, usually the only big, big cooking time is like Thanksgiving. We don't really do anything big as far as cooking for like Christmas or anything like that. Ah, <sighs> your cooking schedule, yeah? Your cooking schedule? Mm-hmm. A set meal for every day of the week. Fair enough. Can I ask what your cooking schedule looks like? Can I ask what your cooking schedule looks like? <sighs> sure. Monday's mac and cheese, chili on Tuesday, meatloaf Wednesday, cheeseburger Thursday, fish Friday, Saturday steak and mash, and it's corn on the cob Sundays. Wow. Uh, you've had this schedule for a while now, haven't you? Ah, I see. And you've had this schedule for a while now? A little over 20 years. Hmm. 20 years of chilies on Tuesday. That's incredible. For mercy's sake. 20 years of chili on Tuesday. They're a healthy addition to any diet. And tasty. I'll be on my way now. We have your Thanksgiving lunch on Christmas Day here. Okay, that makes sense. You don't have a roast dinner? No, no roast dinner. No, no, no big dinners or anything like that. We don't do anything like that. We've never done anything like that, really. Hey, subscriber. Hey, James. How you doing, James? And thank you, Just Ush. Just Ush. Just Ush. Just Ush. Thanks for subscribing. In my country, we do dinner on Christmas Eve and Christmas lunch and dinner also. Wow. That's a lot of meals. Uh, uh, no honking. Let me pull out. Sorry. Have a good Christmas day, you filthy animals. <laughs> Like tomorrow, we're not having any big dinner. Uh, for, I'm talking Christmas. We're not having any big dinner. The only thing we're doing is we're going over. We're having some presents. And then we're going to be playing like card games and board games and stuff like that. And like finger foods and, and whatnot. But not like a big dinner or anything like that. Uh, what what is this? Four hundred three Pine Street. Yeah, four hundred three Pine Street. This is four hundred two Pine Street. Close enough. Yeah, that's close enough. Hello, Molly Joe. How are you? Hope you're having a good day. Yes, and hope you have a oh, the best day, Christmas Kay. ever too. Hi, Thomas. Got a parcel for you. Ah, oh, thanks. I'm sure Mo, uh, Santa will be happy this arrived just in time. That's right, Santa. <laughs> Anything I can do to help the old man out? Um, how are things with the family? Yeah. Uh, how are things with the family? Good. Good. Really looking forward to the holidays. I've been making Grace this great big space station out of ply it's coming together really nicely and barry is getting max a second hand guitar as we speak oh that sounds great i'm sure they can't wait for christmas <laughs> neither can i uh what about you and emily got anything special planned for the coming days well we did but uh meredith canceled on us once again Sadly, Meredith can't make it this year. You know, just dinner with the family and Mildred. We won't tell her the bad news unless she probably asks. You know, just dinner with the family and Mildred. 
<laughs> she joined us last year. Watch out with the eggnog is all I can say. Ah, good tip. I best get some more just in case. And maybe some antacid. Well, I'd best get on. I have to check on the oven. Or Santa will have to eat charcoal when he stops by tonight. <laughs> all right. Best get back to it myself. Give our love to Barry and the kids. And Santa, if you happen to see him. Will do. You and Emily have a great Christmas too, okay? I am not an eggnog kind of guy. I've tried many, many, many times to get into the eggnog spirit. And I'm not an eggnog kind of guy. I think it's just the texture. Honestly, what it boils down to. I think it's the texture that is just... I'm not there. I'm, I'm, I'm not sold. Is that much Christmas lighting really necessary? Uh, Thomas. Be quiet. That was very rude of you to say, Thomas. Is that Christmas lighting? Is that too much? Is that necessary? Christmas, my good man. People celebrate it differently. My lord. Put a letter in here. There you go. Merry Christmas. You've never tried eggnog? Do they sell eggnog in the UK? I'm sure they do, right? Yeah. Hello, Lady Fluffy Dragon. Good to see you as well. How are you? Okay, go, go, go. Mm -mm -mm. Hello, Liberty Bell. Good to see you too. The taste and the texture. There's some decent tasting one, but it's mostly the texture. I mean, there's all different kinds of flavored eggnog out there nowadays, but it's definitely the uh, the texture that's just like, what the frick? Oh, look at that guy's that guy's outfit was pretty cool. Look at this cul-de-sac. Heron Circle feels like I'm going around in circles sometimes. Well, you are a mailman. Mm -mm -mm. Hello, Sherry. How are you? Oh, you're Daisy. Good to see you. Welcome in. I won't drive over there. I'll just walk it, walk right on over there. Eggnog's another way to hide the liquor. That's very true as well. Another satisfied customer. Unless it's Bill's. Is it too thick? I think it is. I think it, it's too thick. Yeah. Very much too thick. Is eggnog alcoholic? I mean, you can make it alcoholic, but traditionally, no. <laughs> it's like a Coke and rum. Is Coke alcoholic? Well, I mean, you can make it. I just blew through a stop sign. It's okay. It's Christmas. I don't know which house it is. Maybe this one right here. Yeah, that one. Hey, Savage. How are you? Good to see you. Old milk punch still? There Ew. Go. Ew. Old milk punch? Ugh. Just this, just what? how you describe that, my lord. Mm-hmm. I definitely will tell you, I will not be partaking in any eggnog this holiday season. I don't know if Danielle likes it. I wonder if Danielle likes eggnog. What? You do? What the heck? All right, she does. She likes eggnog. What kind of eggnog? All right, she does not know that there is different kind of eggnog. <clears throat> I think there's like different flavors. You probably just like the regular traditional one, which is. I don't know. Eggnog? <laughs> Vanilla? What? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> there we are. What is this number? This is 103, 103 East Street or East First Street. 
what the hell that's a hell of a street 103 east first street right my lord thank you <clears throat> uh thomas you gotta pull the package out of the truck there guy thank you third time's a charm great Part job and parcel <laughs> great job <laughs> ring the doorbell ring a ding ding amazon packages here oh, they must be out of town for the holidays wow really <laughs> Must be out of town for the holidays. Well, if that's true, uh, hopefully nobody steals their package. My lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey, Shabby Doo, how you doing? What's going on? Hope you're well. Can I put smaller packages in the mailbox? Um, that would be a brilliant idea, first and foremost. But I don't think you can. Oh, wait, this way? Yes. Hello, Millie. Oh, God. Bert's out of town for the holidays. But he did ask me to keep an eye on his place. Seems to be in order. Okay. All right. Keep an eye on his place. I mean, I don't, I don't know if anybody would ever, like, mess with this place. Mackey's Bait Tackle and Boat Rental open May, June, July, and August. Currently closed for the season. Hello, Stewie. How you doing? I don't know where the mailbox would be. I guess right here? No, maybe the other side? Maybe up? Where would he put a mailbox here? Where? Oh, wait. Right there. In front of his freaking door, you idiot. Right there. Perfect. Mm-mm. You would like to try eggnog. I'm going to remember that. And then when you do try it, you're going to be like, maybe I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done this. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you'll like it. Danielle likes it. I don't like it. Some of the chat likes it. Some of the chat doesn't like it. I guess it's one of those things. I think I saw some comparison to candy corn. Candy corn's the same thing. Candy corn... You either like it or you don't. I don't know if they sell candy corn in the UK. I don't think they do. Um, and the thing about candy corn is that the majority sucks. But like one in every 25 piece, it hits different. You know what I mean? So you're always eating the bag of candy corn to get that one in 25 chance. So that's the only thing about candy coin. Candy coin? What the frick? Candy corn is you're not enjoying it until you hit that one piece it's like it's a bit of gambling there yeah it's like playing the slot machine like you're you're you keep feeding the penny machine until you get that like you know big two dollar payout yeah Uh, give me that. Christmas gift. Uh, here's hoping. We're one of the rare that are celebrating Christmas on January 7th. What is your favorite drink for Christmas? Uh, for Christmas, we used to do this um, holiday punch, which would be like uh, Hawaiian punch mixed with uh, vanilla ice cream mixed with 7-Up uh, mixed with uh, frozen strawberries. 
We called it holiday punch. We would mix those four in a giant pot. Pretty good. Thank you for the 10 wow, months, Savage. Visit from the Poker King. I humbly thank you for the honor. The pleasure is all mine, and this package is yours. <laughs> um, sure. The pleasure is all mine, sir, and this package is yours. Who, boy, Frank came through once again. Ah, package from Frank, huh? Uh, what's in it? Let's not ask that question. It sounds kind of weird. Uh, I don't want to know what's in it. Okay. Uh, well, all right. Well, fine. I don't want to be mean, but I also don't want to be... Uh, what's in it? What's in it? You don't want to know, Thomas. You don't want to know. Shouldn't have well, asked. I will tell you, I'm kicking off the new year with a bang. <laughs> I better put this somewhere dry. And then it's back to reading Doyle Brunson's super system. Ooh, you're in trouble this Sunday, sir. Sounds like fireworks. Glad I can blame the cold for my shaking hands. And what are you doing tomorrow night? And what are you doing tomorrow night? I'm going to visit my brother and his family in Idaho. Anyway, later, Thomas, and take care on those icy roads. <laughs> Return to the post office. That's right. <clears throat> Hello, not given. How are you? Welcome in. It's a box of Smex toys, obviously. It's Smex checks. That's what it is. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Where are you going? Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Love you. Bye. Christmas Sandrock stream. Yes, please. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Hello, Miriam. How are you? Hello, Maris. What's going on? Yes, I'm feeling a lot better. Yes, I'm feeling... I'm feeling a lot better back to my old self is how I'm feeling. Make a right. I'm getting better at driving. A little bit. Uh-oh. So, oh, wait. This is still from this morning. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I've created a traffic log now, haven't I? Traffic jam. Uh, don't mind me. I'm just going to squeeze right on in. Thank you. That is our Christmas Eve shift. Here we are. Hey, Thomas. Do you think it'll ever stop snowing? I'm glad it's the last day before Christmas break. Oh, sorry, Frank. They're forecasting snow until at least the new year. But hey, about Christmas. Maybe you'll like to help us out for uh, help us eat our food. Uh, um, <clears throat> are there any good basketball games scheduled? No, but there's probably football games scheduled. Um, maybe you'd like to help us eat our food. I like that. Meredith bailed on us, which leaves us with a bit more food than we can handle. Maybe you'd like to volunteer and help us eat it uh, tomorrow evening. Christmas dinner at the Weiss residence. That sounds great, Thomas, but I'm afraid I'm all tied up. The Knicks are playing the Celtics. <laughs> I think the Celtics will go all the way this year, but I wouldn't count out an upset at the Garden. This is based in 1985, so going into 1986. Who won the NBA Finals in 1986? Was it the Celtics? I'm not going to give you uh, any betting advice, Frank. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot he has, like, a gambling problem. Um, let's go, Knicks. Uh, no, I'm not going to give you betting advice. I'm not going to give you betting advice, Frank. I'm going to have to sleep on it, but you know I can't pass up a juicy bet. Hey, Thomas, before you go home, I need a favor. Can you help me with that guy over there? 
He said he's looking for a job, but I really gotta run now. Try to find out what he's made of, okay? Good luck. Looking for a job, interesting. Hello, crazy mad chick, Hello, how are you? Hello, man. I heard you were looking for a job. My name's Thomas Weiss, and I've been working for the Postal Service for nearly 40 years. Hi, I'm Matt Kearney. I'm glad someone finally showed up. Nice to meet you, Matt. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm basically a computer expert, kind of in between jobs right now. I've been programming since I was 11 years old. I'm looking to start my own software company. I wonder back in the 80s how it was when people were like, oh, what do you do? And they're, you're, you know, you would say, oh, I meant computers. Like, were people kind of like skeptical really back then? Uh, this is way before my time, obviously. Were people skeptical to the point where they're like, <laughs> yeah, you're fiddling around with uh, computers. Get a real job. And then, like, you know, before you know it, 20 years later, it's a big boom. And then now, 40 years later, it's even a bigger boom. You are aware that we don't have computers here saving up some money to start your own enterprise? I mean, aspirations and goals. Part of, like, the uh, interviewing process. Ah, that's great. So you want to save up some money to start your own enterprise one day? Bingo. I'm already working on it at home, and whenever I have time in my schedule. Um, won't that interfere with your day job, yeah? Aren't you afraid that might interfere with your day job? I have the focus, determination, and willpower of a professional athlete. Hmm, okay. I have a few more questions. That's a good point, Liberty Bell. That's a very good point. Very good point indeed. I guess we'll, uh, they, they skeptical now, but we'll see what happens 10 years from now, right? <laughs> That's a good point though. Um, now I do have a friend. I have a very close friend who's actually a postal, uh, he's a postal worker. He's a mailman and his job is very like strenuous. Shout, but babe, honestly, let me just take this moment to say shout out to, uh, um, to all the postal workers, whether you you work postman, you're a postman, you're a delivery driver, freaking Amazon, whatever it is. Shout out to you guys for making it possible. We've become so desensitized recently with Amazon where packages show up automatically, but the logistics behind it is what's really crazy. Um, do you enjoy working with customers? I, 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 I mean, I don't know. Would you, would that happen in a, in a postman kind of deal here working overtime definitely would uh, would you mind working overtime every now and then during the busy christmas period for instance i don't think i'll ever have to work overtime the way i organize everything overtime simply won't be necessary oh i sure like the sound of that but what about when it is beyond your control that sounds great but what if overtime is needed for reasons that are beyond your control? Oh, well, oh, okay, yeah, sure. I'll go the extra mile, take one for the team, and all that. Could we wrap this up now, please? I don't think a working here requires an extensive interview process. Wow. Um, very well. I'd like to ask one more question, actually. Uh, I'd like to ask one more question, actually. What salary are you looking for? Yes. What salary are you looking for? I know I can't ask for a salary in the computer expert range, but I would expect a salary that reflects a senior position. <laughs> oh, thanks for applying. For applying, we'll be in touch. Thanks for applying. We'll be in touch. Okay, but please be aware that I've also received other offers. Bye. What a strange fellow. What a very strange fellow. Tuesday afternoon. <phone rings> Meredith, this doesn't look like an afternoon. This is like nighttime. Yep, hello. Hey, honey, it's me. Finally found time to call. I'm having such a busy day. Did you invite anyone else over for tomorrow? 
yes, I did. But no takers. So it's just you, me, and Mildred. Or is Beth coming as well? Yeah, Beth is coming. So happy I could finally change her mind. <laughs> nice work. She's great company. It also means a little less Mildred. <laughs> Who the, who is this Mildred? I need to I need to know who this Mildred is. Um, <clears throat> she's great company. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's great company. As opposed to Mildred. <laughs> no, this is not funny. Mildred is a sweetheart, and you better wear the Christmas sweater she knitted for you last year. <laughs> hey, let's see. How are you? Hey, dark rubies. What's going on? Hey, Dixie chick. Good to see you. I love Christmas sweaters, so don't worry about it. I love Christmas sweaters, so don't worry about it. Great. So I won't be the only one looking stupid. Oh, by the way, I've got great news. We finally found someone to take some shifts off my hands. That's fantastic. No more 60-hour work weeks. Uh, do you know who it is? I wasn't at the interview, but I was introduced to him after he was hired. Oh, it's, it's, oh, that's right. Did he wear glasses? That's right. Hey, Runes One, hey, Wandering Witches, how are you? Did he wear glasses? Yes, he did. Was he wearing a turtleneck as well? Was he wearing a turtleneck sweater? Yeah. Are we playing Guess Who? His name is Matt. Yeah. Matt Kearney. He said he's going to completely overhaul our computer system. That's the guy I interviewed this afternoon. Really? Did you like him? Uh, can't say that I did, to be honest. Or he made my blood boil. That kid's a piece of work. He sounded perfect, and he'll do great. Uh, uh, he's a bit condescending. Let's be, let's be interesting. Or let's be... What the hell did I just say? Let's be interesting. Let's be honest. Still trying to wake up. I apologize. Hello, Danny. Uh, can't say that I did, to be honest. Uh, that's a shame. But it doesn't matter. He'll be taking the load off my shoulders. And I won't be working alongside him anyway. You'll probably see him more often than I will. Hmm. You might be right. <laughs> you might be right about that. We'll see how it all pans out. Oh, gotta go now. Bye, hun. Uh, we definitely will be watching another TV show. Back to some more Magnum PI. He's so happy. Look at him. Good time. Ah! I am Klaus Kartoffel Knudel. You must be Jimmy, my new partner. We will be the best team in the district. Where is the cop car? Let's catch some crooks. You don't like to talk much, Jimmy. Uh... I need a friggin' coffee. I yeah. feel you. Coffee and your real donuts. I love it. Coffee and the real donut. Oh, Wednesday, Christmas Day, Christmas morning. Here we are. Weiss residence. Good morning. Hey, Dad. It's me. Hey there, Em. Meredith. Christmas. No, we'll just say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, too. I wish I was in P.O. right now. That makes the two of us. This white Christmas is also a very cold Christmas. Well, we'll just say that makes us two, yeah. Makes the two of us. That makes two of us. And probably three, but Mom's at the motel. On Christmas morning. I'm not the only one working today, then. Fine mess I got myself into, huh? So Thomas is by himself. His daughter's working. His wife is working. He's just sitting here on this white Christmas day. Very well. Um, do you want my two cents, or shall I just listen? Do you want my two cents, or shall I just listen? I reckon I already know what you're thinking, and you're probably right. I'll be okay, Dad. Work's progressing nicely, actually. And Tess is coming over later. She's also stuck here. 
We're going to try to cook up some semblance of a Christmas meal. Oh, that's good to hear, Em. The other M will be in charge of my Christmas dinner. But I'm glad the other M will be in charge of my Christmas dinner. <laughs> Can't disagree there. Her lemon mashed potatoes alone blows all my cooking out of the water. Lemon mashed oh, potatoes. That reminds me, I need to try to pry that secret recipe out of her. I'm going to call her at the motel right now. Thanks for talking, Dad. And Merry Dis Christmas. Missile Thomas wishes you the same. Missile Thomas wishes you the same. Oh, I did not hear that. <laughs> Love you. You don't like the sound of lemon mashed potatoes? I kind of do. I like the sound of it. I'd put some pepper on that. Oh, Mildred, you shouldn't have. Uh oh. We already have the most <laughs> beautiful pair of Christmas sweaters in the world. And now we have two sweaters each. You must have put so much work into them. Oh, please don't mention it, dearie. Knitting sweaters can be quite straining. But knowing how happy they make you always makes up for it. Well, we're so grateful. Right, Thomas? Um... We won't be mean to Mildred. We'll just say thank you. So thank you, but I think you should not do this again. Let's not say that. They're beautiful. Thank you so much, Mildred. I especially like that our sweaters have the same pattern. They're comfy and colorful. Yes. They're so comfy <laughs> and colorful. If only it was Christmas every day. Oh, Thomas, that makes me so happy to hear. I can't wait to start working on next year's designs. Oh, great. I've also made sweaters for Frank and Jack and Robert and Bert, but they all said that wool gives them an allergic reaction. Isn't that a coincidence? Beth, I hope you aren't allergic to wool. Oh, man. You're not going to believe the coincidence, Mildred, but yes, I actually am. And it's such a shame. If only I, too, could celebrate Christmas wearing one of those beautiful sweaters. Anyway, uh, Emily, would you be a darling and pass me the peas, please? Peas? I, I don't... Oh, you mean the string beans. I suppose peas would have gone lovely with the meal as well, now that you mention it. <laughs> right, Thomas? I love the green beans. That, that looks delicious, by the way. Uh, did anybody notice over here? This looks a lot like Shrek, the gingerbread man. That's, that's the, that's Shrek. That's 100% Shrek gingerbread man. Yeah, that's a reference right there, 100%. Uh, I suppose I've had some beans already, thanks, dear. Peas, beans, it's all green to me. There you go, that's something, uh, uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Thomas would say. Peas, beans, it's all green to me. Oh, yes, of course. I meant the string beans. Of course, silly me. But let me get on with it. It's time for my presents now. Oh. And you may have already guessed that they're books. Mildred, why don't you open yours first? Well, I'm not really one for presents, but I appreciate the gesture. <laughs> Let's see now. The cat's pajamas. I've never heard of it. But it has a nice title, I suppose. It's an encyclopedia about cats. A whiskerpedia, if you will. Someone wow. drew my attention to it, and I immediately thought of you. Oh, well, isn't that lovely? Such a heartfelt gift, isn't it, Thomas? Not the gumdrop button. Uh, yeah, that, 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 yes, that, that's, you can start knitting your cat some pajamas now, yeah. Maybe you can start knitting your cats some pajamas now. Well, they do like balls of yarn. Thank you, Beth. It was my pleasure, Mildred. And now for Emily's gift. Uh oh. Why, thank you, Beth. I do always appreciate your taste in books, so I'm looking forward to The Countess and the Carpenter. Oh, would you look at that? Is this a romance novel? I've never really read one of those. Right in one guess, Emily. 
I hear the writer Summers here, so this book is locally sourced, so to speak. And, dare I say it, the prose is quite compelling in the romance department. Wow. If you catch my drift. <laughs> Jesus. I think I do. <laughs> but you are something Please. else. Thank you. This will certainly get a nice spot on our bookcase. What about for Thomas? I don't think I'll ever read it, but sure. Good to know the romance department is in our bookcase now. I I mean, yeah. Ah, good to know the romance department is in our bookcase now, so I'll know where to find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to reading it already. Thank you so much, dear Beth. You're welcome, Emily. I'm sure you'll love it. Okay, Thomas, it's your turn now. Oh, God. Let's see? Crazy sports facts, too. Even more crazy sports facts. Ah! Whew, boy, I love this stuff. I'm actually reading part one at the moment, so I can tuck into this straight after. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. You're welcome, Thomas. And you're right, there's some fascinating tidbits in part one as well. Even if one no longer actively plays sports, it's at least fun to read about it, right? Uh, can we eat the food? It's getting cold here. Hey, you got turkey, green beans, and mashed potatoes. That's it. That's all you have. I feel like there needs to be more here. Is it allowed to have stuffing? Hey, subscriber. Hey, Ramon, thanks for subscribing. Is it, are you allowed to have stuffing on Christmas? I've never really been into sports, to be honest. No, you are. I can still beat the kids at basketball? Yes. Hey, now. Kids playing basketball still regret it when they challenge the mailman for a game of horse. Well, there's no shame in admitting that you're not getting any younger, Thomas. In fact, none of us are exactly spring chickens anymore. Things like your arthritis can't magically be wished away by positive thinking. Thanks for uh, bringing that up there, Emily. Uh, who's up for some blueberry pie? What are you talking about? We haven't even eaten dinner yet. Uh, who's up for some blueberry pie? Speaking of blueberries, my bridge partner, Edna's niece, discovered this mole last week. This is a that terrible fun? dinner. I really need to take this. Hello? Hi there. Could you put me through to Meredith Weiss, please? Uh, I beg your pardon? This is Oh, this is Meredith's boss, uh, boss, right? He sounds like it. I remember his voice from uh, the uh, base game. Um, uh, excuse me, who is this? Oh, it's Steve. Steve Mitchell from work. He's Meredith there. Uh, do you understand that it's Christmas right now? Do you understand that people are celebrating Christmas right now? Christmas? Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. Ah, is it Christmas already? Gosh, I, I totally missed that. I've employed a couple of old nighters. <sighs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna splash some water on my face. Sorry again, Mr. Weiss. Enjoy your evening. Bye. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. Oh, all right. Everything okay, honey? Um, just someone who doesn't understand Christmas, uh, that silly boss from Meredith's work called. Uh, that silly boss from Meredith's work called for some reason or other. Yeah. Uh, never mind. Beth, you were saying? Uh, I wasn't actually, but I was looking for a way to say this and now's as good a time as any, I suppose. My dear friends, I am leaving Providence Oaks. See ya. What? You're what? What's that, dear? Take your books with you. Uh, why? Why? Well, before we move on to the sad part, let me first tell you the good part. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to be a grandmother. Oh, that—that that is amazing. Well, I'll be. Whose mother? I, I Goodness. Mean... Quiet down, Mildred. <clears throat> Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, my son Daniel and his wife are expecting. Isn't that wonderful? But, and here's the proverbial kicker. You may remember that they moved to Savannah, Georgia a few years ago. So if you put two and two together, 
you're moving away with them or they're having quadruplets uh you're moving away to be with them you're moving away to be with them that's great beth i'm so happy for you oh, that is marvelous beth congratulations oh, i wish you and your family all the happiness in the world but i'll miss you something terrible we all will but we have to toast to the good news. Thomas, go pour us some brandy and I'll get the pie. Okay. Oh, Thomas, would you have any antacid? That eggnog is starting to stir up something indiscreet. See, the eggnog's bad. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. You had me at brandy, though. You had me at brandy. <laughs> now, let's celebrate this wonderful evening, ladies. Here's to a lovely old Christmas spent with good friends. Here, 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 here. Very good. Nobody ate dinner that day. We just ate breakfast. Hey, Thomas. Or dessert. Did you Sorry. See the game last night. Morning, Frank. Uh, nope. We had our Christmas dinner. Uh, but I have a feeling you're going to talk about it anyway. Uh, what happened? What happened? The Celtics were up by 25 in the third quarter. But they still lost the game in <laughs> double overtime. Um, so was it a big payday for you or did you lose out? Mm, so was it a big payday for you? <laughs> One of the biggest of the year. Wow. And now the odds are dropping for Boston. I'm going to bet on them to win it all this season. Wow. All right. Um, nice move. Good luck, Frank. I, I mean, ew, gambling. Yeah. Nice move. Good luck, Frank. Thanks, Thomas. Have a good one today. Very well. All right. The day after Christmas. Now, all the packages that I've delivered all the way up until Christmas, now everybody's going to be returning the packages. <laughs> Did everybody keep their Caesar's receipts? Greetings, P.O. It's the second day of Christmas, and I don't have turtle doves or partridges and pear trees, but you know what I do have? P.O. Positive <laughs> or pet peeve? Season's greetings to you too, Jack. It's, um, Angela here. I watched the movie Gremlins the other day, right in my own cozy VCR-equipped living room. And I just want to say that it was a lovely and inexpensive way to have a great time. Thanks for the tip, Angie. Uh, uh, Angela. Uh, I'm going to assume that wasn't a surreptitious advertisement for the flick shack. And I'm also going to assume my next rental there will be free of charge. Hey! Okay, on to the weather. It looks like we'll have lots of snow today. How about some music now? I love that. Um, <clears throat> I love that so much. Um, just good, good dialogue. Good dialogue for sure. Good voice and acting as well. Good voice acting. There we are. Um, but yeah, so one thing about working in retail, one of the saddest things about working in retail, I think, is the like the day or the week after Christmas when everybody comes and returns their gifts that they got from people over the holidays. So like, yeah, there's so many returns. Like, I mean, I don't know. Even I've, I've never returned a gift ever. Was this 203 Jackson Street? I've never returned a gift. Anybody that's ever given me anything, never returned it. Even if it's something that I wouldn't necessarily use, maybe. I okay, let's get never this return to its it. destination. It was a gift. Right? It's like, kind of like um, when people like. Not that I'm against it. I'm not against it. I'm just like, it, it, it's like some people are like, here, would you like to have some cash for your birthday? Or not for your birthday. Well, for your birthday or like for your, for your, uh, for Christmas. Birthdays are more acceptable, but for Christmas, it's like, okay. You know what I mean? Ding dong. Kovac's family always heads to Arizona in the wintertime. And who can blame them? What if it didn't fit? Well, okay. And yet that's different. Satisfied customer. That's like clothes, right? I guess I'm kind of not speaking about clothes. More, more or less just like things that... I don't know, maybe like something like a if someone bought you a book or someone bought you a a, a trinket, uh, maybe not clothes in particular. And plus, if someone bought you clothes, 
you would at least hope they would maybe ask for your size or something be like yeah what's your size i wouldn't guess somebody's size i feel like that could be a very dangerous game to play <laughs> what if you got them something way too big or something way too small <laughs> another satisfied customer unless it's bills there we are Mm -mm. Does this game have an endpoint or you keep playing as long as you want? No, this game has an endpoint. It does have a story. Uh, and this is just the DLC, uh, not the base game. Mm -mm -mm. My mom used to include the receipt in the gift box because she knew I might want to return it. I always feel like if someone's trying, that's what matters, right? I don't know. I've always felt bad like if I'm like oh yeah if I ever thought of the idea I I'm gonna go return your gift it was a nice try but somehow it's always nice when our neighbors get a letter you'll get it next Here's year you, maybe Andy and Toby. you'll get it next year we'll see <laughs> someone get you a book that they think you might like or somebody gets you whatever it might be it could be like oh somebody got you a, a reusable straw reusable straw or like they got you like little toiletry items or they got you a razor or they got you a belt or you know whatever it might be and maybe they got you a yeah a kettle maybe they got you a mug right and maybe you're like, oh, I don't like what it says on the mug or I don't, I would never use this mug or something, right? I don't know. I guess there is, is anybody guilty of re-gifting items? Anybody want to like raise their hand? Would you re-gift items? Or is that like the sin of all sins? I guess in a way. You, not returning an item, you can instead re-gift an item. <laughs> I don't know. It reminds me of an episode of Seinfeld, though. I've never re-gifted an item. Hello, Jordan. How's it going? Like, it's almost like if you had like a, what is it? Like a, um, secret Santa at work, okay, Thomas, right? Just keep the wheels steady and trust the snow chains on the tires. If you had a secret Santa at work and like, it's like somebody who is like a coworker of yours that you barely talk to or you barely know. And they just like get you some things. And it's like things that you're like not interested in. You know what I mean? It's like, well, at least they put in the effort. I'm reminded of our honeymoon to Niagara Falls all those many years ago. This is Bear Creek, by the way. Now, this gentleman right here that we're about to uh, talk with uh, is a romanceable character parcel. <laughs> in the base game. He is a romanceable romance candidate, I guess you could say. Hey there. Looks like Santa's Robert. a little late this year. <laughs> <laughs> like buying a bald man a comb and shampoo. <laughs> That's what you get for being a good boy? Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, keep ordering heavy parcels and Santa will skip you all together. There we go. If you keep ordering heavy parcels like this, Santa might just skip your house altogether. Oh, sorry, Thomas. Let me give you a hand. Uh, that must be the fire pit I ordered. Ah, now I can finally go ice fishing without freezing at the same time. Huh, ice fishing. Sounds like a nice adventure. I thought there'd be no more fishing until spring. No, oh, no, 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 no. Sounds like a nice adventure. That sounds like a nice adventure. Well, you're in luck. Bert's out of town, hey, so subscriber. I could use someone else to talk to. Not that Bert talks that much. <laughs> uh, how about it? Tomorrow evening. Thank you, Victor, for uh, subscribing. I appreciate that. Sure, let's do it. Sure, let's do it. But you better make sure that fire pit is working. Perfect. I'll bring all the gear, but 
Feel free to bring some booze. Panic Cook became a member. Hey, did you have a nice Christmas, by the way? Hey, Panic. Thank you for uh, becoming a member. I appreciate that. That was very kind of you. Very generous. Big ups to you. Thank you for the tip for good measure as well. Thank you for that. Hope you are well. I've had better. My daughter couldn't make it this year. Uh, I've had better. My daughter couldn't make it. Uh, sorry to hear that. Anyways, I won't hold you up any longer. I I need to assemble this baby. See you tomorrow, Thomas. I'll come pick you up. Hey, Dream Alice. How are you? Good to see you. Hey, Mary. Good to see you. I'm trying to think of an instance of maybe a time I might have, like, thought about regifting, but never really regifted. I wonder if Danielle has ever done something like that. Think about White Elephant, right? And the thing about White Elephant is you can't really... You can't really... It, it, it's a numbers game, right? The only way you're getting what you kind of want is if you get, like, your first number... Or if you get the first number or if you get the last number, right? That's when you, it, it, it's, it's, it's basically, it's, that's all it is. It's a numbers game. So it's like, hopefully you got the close to, hopefully you either got number one or you're close to the end, right? Other than that, if you're in the middle grounds, early rounds, you're probably going to be ending up getting something you don't want, right? There we go. <clears throat> but even like White Elephant though, typically for us, there's like a $20 limit, $30 limit for White Elephant. So it's like most of the time, $20 stuff, it's like kind of like fun. And most, mostly people get like fun and creative on their ideas, right? Be creative with it, right? That's the fun part. Holy crap! Cabins must be so cozy in the winter time. Oh, cold. Probably freezing cold. My lord, I almost hit that uh, deer. Also, with like white elephant, it's like when you play a white elephant and you get a gift for white elephant. Sometimes you would like to think that you should get a gift that you would want in white elephant, right? Get a gift you would want. That was weird. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Like, would anybody be offended if you found out that the gift you got was regifted? Would anybody be offended or no? Be like, nah, I, I wouldn't mind if somebody regifted that. Or would you be offended if somebody regifted the gift you gave them? You would probably maybe go into interrogation mode and ask why. But is it your business to ask why? It shouldn't be, right? I don't know. Thank you, Mary, for the super chat. Appreciate that. Mm-mm-mm. It'd be like if you were the person giving the item to somebody and you're like thought, oh man, I really have this awesome present or this awesome idea. And you really, really believe that it's a great gift for this in particular person. And that person either gives it to someone else or sells it or returns it. Would that hurt your feelings or no? <clears throat> Whoa. Okay. Very well. Um... Is this a news news station? Okay, it looks like you're having some car trouble. Whoa, looks like you're having some car trouble. Yeah, uh, just a second, my good man. Gabriel, can you figure out what's wrong with this blasted vehicle? Can He's wearing Tim's? News here? I mean, I'm not really a car mechanic, Mr. Price. But I know the smoke isn't a good sign. <laughs> no duh, Einstein. Say, hey, Mr. Mailman, what's your story? You wouldn't know unless they told you. What if you found out, right? You'd rather receive a regifted item than someone spend money they can't afford. What if they can afford and they just didn't like the item and so they just gave it away to somebody else? Would that be offensive or no? 
I'm just here to deliver a package to my wife in not any dirty manner. I'm just here to deliver a package, sir. Oh, is it for me? And by any chance, would there be a fully functional car in that package? Um, it's for the motel, my good man. No, sorry. It's for the motel. Well, then what do I care? What's taking Elsa so damn long? Gabe, if you don't know what you're doing, then why on God's green earth are you fiddling around with that engine? Just thought I'd pop up in the hood, Mr. Price. What with the smoke and all? <laughs> it needs to vent. Needs to vent, huh? Huh. Never have I felt more like a busted car engine. God! I'm dying in this podunk country ass town. Bunch of freaking yokels. <laughs> oh. So, hey there. Hello. I see you've already had the privilege of the full Connor Price experience. Worth the price of admission? Ha 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 ha. Um. Let's try to make her chuckle. Quite the experience it was. <laughs> well worth the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Connor can be a bit much. Anyway, I'm Ilsa Richter, local TV segment producer turned car problem solver. Ah. And that sporting young man over there is Gabriel Serrano, local TV sound guy turned amateur mechanic. Emphasis on amateur. Hey, I never claimed to know anything about cars. Just because I used to be a studio tech, Mr. Price put me on engine duty. Anyway, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. I'm Thomas Weiss. Mail carrier turned TV reporter's punching bag, and I know just the guy to fix the problem. No, we know the guy. Yeah. Actually, this would be a perfect time for uh, Lori to fix the van. Yeah. And as the local mail carrier, I know just the guy to fix your car problem. If you mean young car service, I'm way ahead of you, Mr. Weiss. They're on their way right now. That's great, Ilsa. You're an even better car problem solver than you are a segment producer. Flattery will get you everywhere, Gabe. Ah, that must be Ben Young. Uh, maybe not, Lori? They'll fix you right up in no time? You're in capable hands. He'll have you fixed up in no time. God, I hope so. We need to get to Melville, and we're already way behind schedule. Hey, Mr. Mailman. Uh, come in here for a second, please. Uh, excuse me. Duty apparently calls. Uh, happy travels. Now, I got a hypothetical here. I'll get you here in a sec. This is your alternative to working at the post office. Sounds like there's an emergency. So we meet again. Uh, so we meet again. Uh-huh. Hey, I'm new here. All of a sudden, I have to check in three people at once who want their own rooms. Separate but close to one another, all equipped with TV VCRs. And, well, long story short, I need to reach Emily Weiss, stat. I'm guessing the local post guy would know where to reach her. Um, I'm sure you will figure things out. Or, sure, her number is 555 Go Take a Hike. <laughs> I happen to know her number by heart. I happen to know her home number by heart. It's 555 8039. Thank you. 555 8039. Come on, pick up already. I'll just leave the parcel here on the counter. Bye. <laughs> They're already gone. Mighty fast towing there, Ben. Okay, hypothetic. What if you thought of a gift, right? And it could be any type of gift, but it's like a gift where it's in high demand and you knew this person really wanted it. And or you might have assumed this person really wanted it, whether it be they want a PS5, they wanted this new Lego set or whatever it might be. Um, American doll, whatever the frick American dolls, right? Um, and it took you some time and some work around to get it. And then you gift it to them because you thought they would like it. And then they decide that they did like it. But then they were like, I'm going to sell it for double its worth. And then they made money off of it. 
Would you be upset or would you not be upset? I guess at that point, it's their gift. They could do whatever they want with it, whether they sell it for a high profit or not. I don't know. Like, what if you bought someone at a very, like, exclusive Lego set and then they, like, sold it for double its value? <laughs> Would that count as that's rude or does it not matter because it's it's theirs <laughs> right i don't know so <laughs> i guess <laughs> that's what comes with giving a gift typically i guess once you give a gift you uh that's it it's not yours anymore anymore it's like small claim score it's like judge judy right judge judy says was this thousand dollars a gift or was it a loan? Well, your honor, it was a gift in the text message, but now I'm saying it's a loan. Well, if you said it was a gift in the text message, then it was a gift. This person knows you nothing, right? Case closed. Circumstantial? No, no, no. I shouldn't even worry about circumstantial. Maybe they're selling it for rent, for food. Maybe they're selling it just to make some good money so they can buy other things. It doesn't matter, circumstantial. It shouldn't matter. It doesn't matter, actually, right? Because it's theirs. Ultimately, right? You can't get mad or not. Whether it's for food or to buy two PS5s or to buy two Lego sets. You know what I mean? Of course, that's a very skewed, like, hypothetical there, but... You know, it's always fun having a discussion about oddities, I guess you could say. <laughs> that's why I'm asking straight up for money it's for Christmas. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. They owe me the profit. <laughs> I, I mean, it's. Oh, silly me. Oh God, it's a good. It's like, it's a good thing. Like, what if, what if Grandma didn't know the? What if Grandma was buying something for Grandson that Grandson really wanted? Oh, there's this magic card that I really want. There's this Pokemon card that I really want. Or there's this booster box that I really want, right? And Grandma buys the booster box for Grandson or Granddaughter, whoever it might be. And grandson and granddaughter, grandchild knows how valuable this item is and then turns around and sells it for double, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, belated Christmas gift? just throwing stuff out there, Maybe. of course. They're getting a gift card next year for Christmas. <laughs> yes, I understand, but Maureen said... Doesn't really matter what Maureen said. I can't help that her orders have been delayed because of the snow. She should have just ordered sooner. It's not like New Year's Eve appeared on the calendar out of nowhere. That's true, but it was only two weeks ago that she decided to throw a celebration at the diner. And once we're sure we can host a proper party for everyone, you are also invited. <sighs> that sounds an awful lot like blackmail to me. Please come to my party, Nancy. But first, hand over a football team supply of cheesy dip, quiche, and sloppy joes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she didn't mean it that way. And I'm sure you're more than welcome either way. But I have to run now. Bye, Nancy. And hi, bye, Thomas. Bye, Kay. <sighs> Marine Hennessy strikes again. P.O. would be a boring place without her. P.O. would be a boring place without her. Boring? Drama free might be the word you're looking for. One thing's for sure, she does not know how to run a business. Always bites off more than she could chew. And now I'm supposed to come to the rescue? Isn't this a great opportunity for some extra revenue? Well, you would think it's, you know, the day after Christmas. Isn't this a great opportunity to generate some extra revenue? With the ridiculous discount she's demanding, it's mostly nothing but a great opportunity for a lot of extra work. Anyway, is that parcel for me? You can just put it on the counter. Well, sure thing, Nancy. Have a great day. Sure thing, Nancy. Have a great day. Yeah, that's actually it. Actually, brings up a good point too, because once you give a gift, um, 
it, it, it's kind of out of your hands, right? I love these also these little uh, big dings love that uh, Kool-Aid It's kind of out of your hands because you can't tell someone what to do or not do with a gift if somebody took your gift returned it at a store got the money for it took that money and went gambling with it yeah it's morally wrong but ultimately you can't really you can't really do anything about it maybe next year you'll just give them a smaller gift or maybe not a gift at all right or bake them a cake yeah <laughs> Hey, if it isn't Connor Price. Or give them coal. Oh, that's him, huh? He's taller than he looks on TV. Let's hope he's in a better mood now. Let's hope he's in a better mood now. He was really quite rude to me earlier. Wow, sounds like a real jerk. Hello, Mr. Price. Still fuming, I see. Or Mr. Price, aren't you supposed to be in Mil Melville? Hmm. Still fuming. Hello, Mr. Price. Still fuming, I see. Well, hey there. Good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, I guess smoking is a slightly healthier way to blow off steam. Especially since we've had a bit of change of plans. Oh, uh, hi, ma'am. I don't think we've met. Uh, Connor Price, KNW6. <laughs> Welcome to the Oregon Trail Motel, sir. Better get to work, honey. I'll see you tonight. Okay, what's up with her? Christmas hangover? Uh, <clears throat> sir, that's my wife. She could be a bit protective of me. Uh, you'll have to forgive my wife. She can be a bit protective of me. A protective of you? Oh, I see. You told her about our little kerfuffle earlier. Mm. Listen, I'm man enough to admit that it wasn't my finest hour. I'm usually a lot more easygoing. In fact, the Willamette Week once called me one of the most likable faces in local broadcasting. Very well. Hello, Masumi. Hello, Grandma Miki. How's it going? Welcome in. Water on the bridge, as far as I'm concerned. It's easy to be nice when everything's fine. And water under the bridge. That's quite all right. Water under the Bear Creek Bridge, as far as I'm concerned. Uh-huh. Well, when my car isn't breaking down during a tight shooting schedule, I'm a pretty swell guy. Believe me, that's the price guarantee. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> so, has Ben Young managed to fix your car or your van yet? Uh, so, has Ben Young managed to fix your van yet? Ha, no, that's the change of plans I was referring to. Uh, turns out we need some parts that the garage doesn't have in stock, so Young's having them shipped over ASAP. But in the meantime, we've decided to stay right here in lovely, picturesque, whatchamacallit, USA. Whatchamacallit. That is so crazy. I made a candle basket as a game prize for a family baby shower years ago. My mom won that basket. The next year for Christmas, she gave me the candle basket. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh. How did you feel? Did you feel... Did you feel a little disappointed? Did you feel a little, uh, did it hurt your heart a bit? Oh, I think that would hurt my heart a little bit. <laughs> it's Providence Oaks, P.O. for short. Yeah, well, to be honest, all these little villages look pretty much the same to me anyway. See, we're supposed to be shooting some remotes on local end-of-year festivities and such. A grand kickoff to our special series on small-town American life. And it doesn't really make much of a difference if we start here or in freaking Melville. Okay, we're right. Uh, Providence Oaks is way nicer than freaking Melville. Except, of course, that... Providence Oaks is way nicer than frickin' Melville. I was gonna say, this town has warmth. I like warmth. And so do our viewers, I'm betting. So get ready for your town to be featured in part one of The Oregon Trail. Um, title pending. Might be a little too on the nose. Now, your husband and you had a good laugh and shook it off. Now, did you, when you got the gift, did you say anything or did you not say anything? 
and just kind of went home that night and just said, wow, they regifted that gift that I made years ago. Did you not say anything? Did you not bring it up to anybody and uh, like to family? Did you just kind of like hold on to it and just say, you know what? We'll just, we'll just not speak of this. That is the same name as this motel. So I guess it isn't particularly original. My wife works here as a receptionist, but she's not the one who named it. See, this is what I'm talking about. Real conversations with real Americans, right? But as fun as this is, I should be turning in. The three of us each got our own quaint little room. Mine's non-smoking, unfortunately. Still beats Gabriel's. His doesn't even have a TV. Can you believe it? Yes, I, I, I think I can believe that. Or, oh, the irony. Um, well, I, I'll best be on my way. This guy's a friggin' something, isn't he? Hmm. Well, I best be on my way. Anyway, great banter. See you around, my main mailman. All right, very well. Bye. Not a word. It's an inside joke between me and my husband. You probably never uh, crafted anything ever again, no? <laughs> for at least for a uh, for a, for a gift wise, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Maybe you did. Maybe you you wouldn't craft anything and give it to specific people in the future. Watch some TV again. Let's do it. Attention, everybody. There's a suspect situation at the drive-in. Sounds like a job for fries and the hamburger. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, real funny, guys. Okay, Klaus, let's go check it out. <laughs> let's get ready to rumble. What the hell do you watch, Thomas? My God. Friday, December 27th. I make gift baskets for friends, but not family anymore. Easier to keep the peace that way. There you go. That's a wonderful idea. <laughs> what a gloriously fine Friday it is out there, y'all. Want to hear a P.O. positive? You're tuned into the right frequency. P.O. positive or pet peeves? Let's hear one from Mildred Meow Jenkins. Hi, Jack. I would like to thank our own Robert Harris for all the snow he shoveled from my driveway this week. He even brought a fish snack for my cats. Say thank you to Robert now, my dears. Way to go, Robert. Feel free to help clear out my driveway as well. It's only about a quarter of a mile. <laughs> and it'll probably need shoveling because more snow's coming. But we're back to bright and sunny skies later today. Back to the music. Very well. Love those P.O. pet peeves jingle jingle all the friggin' way. Uh, we are at 105 East 4th Street. 105, 105. Thank you. Oh, it's a tiny little package. Can I put that in the mailbox? Tiny little thing here. Ring-a-ding-ding. I guess we'll just drop it there. Neither snow nor rain nor heat nor gloom of night. Okay, we'll go left. Turn it in. All the snow is making me feel cold and I've got the radiator on. It's actually pretty cold where I'm at today. It's about 46. Looking at a cold and cloudy Christmas this year. Tomorrow, at least. I mean, if you call that cold, that's cold for us. Should be raining here in the next Fancy few days, too. Handwriting on this one. There you are. Good there. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Red. How's it going? What the heck's going on here? Uh, are you all right? Uh, okay. You're just kind of in the way. 
Is this the... No, that's not the one. This one over here. Sorry. There we go. Perfect. Another satisfied customer. Unless it's Bills. I didn't realize there's a snowman over here, too. I've never made a snowman before. Nor do I think I ever want to. What are you honking at? Hey! Merry Christmas! Happy New Year! It's 26 here and snow on the ground, but not much. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hey, Casey. How you doing, Casey? Good to see you. Pretty warm day. Road rage. <laughs> see, they got... See, they their gift got re-gifted. That's... They're, they're pissed off. Yeah. Hey, Barclay, how are you? Is this 300 Main Street? Perfect. Uh, excuse me. Why? No. Grab the freaking package, Mr. Thomas. There you go. Thank okay, you. Okay, let's get this to its destination. In we go. Oh, there you are. Oh wait, this oh yeah, she runs the library. Hang on, I want to see again. The Galaxy's Guide to Hitchhiking. I wanted to see more of the books. There's the cat pajamas. God Emperor of Sand Hill. The Mermaid's Tail. It's pretty good, yeah. Nice. There you go, Beth. Hi, Beth. I've got a delivery for you. Uh, where do you want it? Oh, dear, Thomas. I almost didn't see you come in there. I was lost in thought, I suppose. Please just put it on the counter, if you will. Thank you. Happy holiday, cans and chat. And hoping thank everyone you again have a wonderful for a lovely new year. Christmas dinner. I had a marvelous time with you all. We loved having you over, Beth, as always. Emily and I had a great time. That was very kind of you, Andrea. Wow, thank you for the massive super chat. That is very kind. Happy holiday, cans and chat. Hoping everyone have a wonderful new year. Happy hope. Happy holidays to you and hope you have a wonderful new year as well. That was very kind of you, Andrea. That was very, very kind. Oh, my Lord. Thank you very much. That was very sweet. Very sweet indeed to you. That was uh, very generous. Very generous. My goodness gracious. Big ups to you. Big ups to you indeed. My Lord. Very kind of you. about that news of yours i was afraid it would perhaps put a dampener on the evening but i was happy we could celebrate together nonetheless sandhill equals dune that could be it <clears throat> it was quite a shock for both emily and myself to be honest we've known each other for so long We're practically part of each other's furniture let me guess I'd be your bookshelf. Hey, Tony. How's it going? All the books on there are gifts from you anyways. Yes, and we'd be your mailbox. Yeah, we'll be your mailbox, I guess. Yes, and we'd be your mailbox. <laughs> or I would be, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but I will miss you too, as Helen Keller once wrote. So long as the memory of certain beloved friends lives in my heart, I shall say that life is good. You're like a walking library. Always a fitting quote. That's nice. I'd write it down, hey, but I forget subscribe. my pen. We'll miss you too, Beth. Ooh. Um. Hey, subscriber. Yeah, you're like a walking library. Absolutely. You're like a walking library, Beth. Always hey, a fitting subscriber. quote. So, haven't you ever thought of moving closer to Meredith over all these years? She is living quite a ways away, right? 
Thank you, Brian, Bobby, and Mr. Red for subscribing. Appreciate it. <sighs> Thought about it? Yes. Your news has put things into perspective, I suppose. But leaving here would sure be a big step. M maybe too big, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe Meredith will even make it out here one day. <laughs> and there's always the phone, of course. And don't forget the postal service. You're quite right. <laughs> quite right you are. Well, I won't keep you any longer, Thomas. I need to sort through this new delivery you've just brought in. And believe you me, that's going to take me a while. Hmm. It's best to take your time with things like that, yes. I understand. It's best to take your time with things like that. Exactly. Whether one likes it or not. Until next time, my friend. Up and at them. See you, Beth. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Paws and Jaws book. Right? The Paws and... Where was it? The Paws and Jaws? And then, like, right here is the, uh, the Pal Cemetery or the Pet Cemetery. Bright Lights, Big Kitty. I don't know what that is. But this one is the, uh, where, where was it? Oh, yeah, right there. The pause. What does it say? The Revenge. The Terrifying New Adventure by the author of Pause 2. I'm sorry. Is this supposed to be Pause 1? What? <laughs> right. Okay. Anyways. And the cat, or the bat in the hat. Yes. Ah, very well. What does this say? Crazy sports facts. Oh, that's what we got. That's what she got us. Even more crazy sports. That's what she gave us for Christmas. I think that it's paw three. You think it's paw three or paw four? <laughs> oh, I didn't see this one. Green eggs and spam. The ketchup in the rice. What the frick? All right. Green eggs and spam. All right, next we go. The catcher in the rye. Oh, is that what the ketchup in the rice is? That's actually hilarious. It would go pause, pause two, then pause the revenge. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Pause one, pause two, and then pause the revenge. I see, I see, I see. Good shout. Good shout. All right. Now, traditionally, where I'm from, we won't get uh, snow until February. Once February comes, we'll get snow. Every Valentine's, it never misses the mark. Every Valentine's, we, we get snow. I mean, you have to think, the first day of winter was what, like three days ago, right? We're officially now in winter. I guess if you're in Australia, are you officially now in summer, yeah? 103 Vintage Street. Perfect. Hello, Victoria. Good to see you, Victoria. Oh, big lights, big city. Ah. Mm, nobody's home. All right, drop the package then. Another day, another dollar. <laughs> I wonder what the average. To sound like Frank. I wonder what the average rate was. What was minimum wage, I guess, in 1985? Probably like, what, $4? $3? Three or $4, maybe? I'm guessing. There we go. Four dollars and twenty-five cents. My lord.
in the 90s it was like 725 technically it is still 725 i think in some states here in the u.s <laughs> that number hasn't changed <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad this is a game it would stress me out to leave packages just on the porch i know right it's a very very much drastic change because like minimum wage where I live is like the state has its number, but like local economy and local businesses, it's about like $19, $20 an hour to start. I think Target, you start at $25 an hour. In Oregon, it was around three dollars and twenty cents. Holy crap, man! It's so crazy. There we go. Have a good one, Maggie Mae. Do take care. Have a merry Christmas as well. You too. Do take care. Whoop. Two more packages. This one's a little bit. Oh God, Fox! No! Oh, that was close. I almost ended that fox's life. I go this way. Right there. Yep. Oh, is this? Oh, this is what's his face? This isn't his house, is it? I hope not. Logging road? Maybe it is his house. Hey, Psycho Gamer. How are you? Good to see you. Gin and Juice. Hello, Gin and Juice. Frank. I want to see what's inside. Oh, this is all his fireworks. Oh, my gosh. All of his fireworks are here. Ah, look who's here. Hey, Thomas. Yeah, I needed to take care of some stuff. Hardly any customers at the post office anyway. $19? Yes. It's very expensive where I live. What if someone needs to send us something urgent? Aren't you worried Walter Morgan might show up? I'm sure they'll just drop by again in a, a little later. Um... Uh, what if someone needs to send something urgent? Yeah. I don't know, Frank. What if there's someone who needs to send something urgent? If it's really urgent, I'll drive it over to the distribution center myself. They know they can count on me. Okay, very well. Mm. Can't say that you're wrong there. Oh, none of my business, I guess. If you say so, Frank. Hey, it's none subscriber. of my business. That big sucker you're carrying is for me, huh? Right on time. It's all coming together. He's gonna have like a giant New Year's hey, party. Thomas, you can keep a little secret, right? Thanks for subscribing, Bunny Gaming. Appreciate it. Of course, Frank. Great. It's not a big deal in any case. A buddy of mine was able to get his hands on some premium quality fireworks. Oh my God. I'm selling them with a nice profit. And anything I can't sell, <laughs> well, this guy. Let's just say you want to be outside Moe's Diner when the clock strikes 12 on New Year's Eve. Frank, that sounds illegal and dangerous. I agree. I agree with Thomas. Classic Frank Coleman, just how I like it. I'm going to pretend we never had this converse conversation. Oh, God. Uh, Encourage it. Don't encourage it. <sighs> encourage it. In other words, classic Frank Coleman. Just how I like it. <laughs> Thomas, wouldn't life be boring without a walk on the wild side every now and then? Um. 
The whole town will talk about it for days. This sounds pretty cool, Frank. I bet the whole town will talk about it for days. Days? How about weeks? I've got a huge stockpile here. I better finish up, Thomas. Can't keep the customers waiting forever. All right, Frank. <laughs> see you at the office. Hey, Bad Ran. How are you? Good to see you. Welcome in. I know the reporters in, are, are in town just in time for this massive explosion about to happen here in the next, uh, I guess, less than a week here. <laughs> Life will be more exciting for Frank when he's two or three fingers down if he's not careful. Oh, God. Or starts a forest fire. Hello, Dark Dragon. Good to see you. Welcome in. Hello, Captain. Welcome. Merry Christmas to you. Ah, Moe's Diner. I haven't... Ah, I, I like... I, I like... Uh, I like this place. It's good people here. Good people. At least from the base game. Good people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some good scenes and good dialogues in the base game from this place. Part and parcel. <laughs> mm, part and partial. How about that? Okay, so we still need to check Spanner Dam for the mood shots. According to this, it offers damn fine views. So. Hey, Mr. Mailman. Come on over. Talk to us for a sec. He is rocking the Tims. We don't have time for idle chit chat. He can help us out, Ilsa. No one knows the town like a mailman. Right, Mr. Weiss? I, 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 well, yes. What do you need? Quite right. Uh, what do you need? Yeah, Gabe. What do you need? Well, we're scouting out this beautiful town of yours for our report on small town America. It's great, but we could use the inside track. So, any secret spots we're bound to miss, but shouldn't? Well, Maggie's bait and tackle, the watchtower up at Eagle Peak, or Jack Reynolds Farm. Hmm. I guess the watchtower at Eagle's Peak. The watchtower up at Eagle Peak. You can take in the view among the treetops. Yeah. But make sure you watch out for those creaky steps. No. Oh, hey, Maureen. Now here's your coffee, folks. Sorry for the delay. <sighs> Faucet's been acting up again, which should have been fixed yesterday. Oh, you want me to check on it, Miss Hennessy? Oh, now look at you, my knight in woolen armor. Would you, dear? I can take a look. Well, isn't that nice of you? Uh, back of the kitchen, honey. Ashley, someone who does know what he's doing is coming in. Uh, show him where the busted faucet is. And stay out of his way. Ashley's a sweetheart, but when it comes to fixing things, <laughs> that boy is all thumbs. See, this is what the segment should be. Interacting with the townsfolk, helping out. I love it. Hey, Mary. Hey, Jocelyn. Hey, Faith Gaming. How are you? Thank you for the 12 months. 12 months. Indeed. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you very much for that. Big ups to you. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Yes, indeed. Oh, such a nice fellow. Yeah, you're in good hands, Maureen. Gabriel may look and act like a naive little pup, but he can fix anything. Well, except for our van. But other than that... Oh, is that a fact? Well, in that case... I can think of a few more things he could fix around here, if you catch my drift. Wishing you and your chat a very happy Christmas. Thank you, Tawar. Tawar, good, thank you. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you, and thank you for the super chat as well. Big ups to you. Thank you very much. Hope you're well. Classic Maureen. I do like Maureen's story. Uh, let me just go check. It is kind of sad, though. Check on him. I mean, <laughs> she does have a sad story so, with her. So, anyway. 
So I should probably get going. Uh, so richer. Is that German? Because Weiss is. Have you tried the blueberry pie here yet? Yes, that's a prominent, um, prominent thing here. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, well, let's ask her. Let's do it. Richter, Richter, not Richter, Rick, Richter, Richter. So. Oh uh, wait, you had the Connor Price experience the other day. Ah. Have you recovered yet? Right. <laughs> I actually encountered him outside the motel yesterday evening. It was a lot nicer this time. It was a lot nicer this time. Yeah. Really? Oh, did he greet you with, good to see you, man? How did you know? Yes, how did you know? That's his go-to when he's forgotten your name. It's good to see you, man, for guys, and hey, lady, for gals. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't worry about it, though. He called me Lisa for the better part of a year. Connor's a lot. But I guess after this week, I hey, can update subscribe. my resume with not just segment producer and Ooh. car problem solver, Ooh. but also not very nice. price wrangler. Must be weird being stuck in town with two colleagues. Gabriel seems very nice, though. Um, Gabriel does seem nice. He seems like a stand-up guy. By the way, thank you so fire for the re-up. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Gabriel seems very nice. Big ups to you. That should make things easier. Oh yeah, he is a big old puppy dog. He's as uncomplicated as Connor is complicated. So, that's a welcome antidote. Well now, sounds like someone is getting a little warm under the collar for our Gabriel. Just oh. between you and me, honey, I have a hunch that feeling is more than mutual. Oh, nice. All right, all right, all right. Ah, you shouldn't startle people like that, though. Maureen, you shouldn't startle people like that. All I know is, I just spent five minutes with our knight in the kitchen, and during that time, he mentioned Ilsa about 12 times. Really? Well, uh... Faucet's all better now, Mo. And we should be hitting the road right about now. Right. Thanks, Maureen. Nice talking to you, Thomas. Bye now, folks! Be sure to check in again soon, you hear? Huh, these TV folks sure know how to liven things up, don't they? Indeed, Maureen. That's right, Diner Lady setting up a love connection. Yes, and not to spoil it, but that, she was pretty good at that in the base game, too. She, she, she's the, uh, what is it? Uh, what would you say? She's the, uh, she's the matchmaker. She is. She's the matchmaker in this game. They are the talk of the town. Yeah. They're the talk of the town, all right. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, you know about my little New Year's Eve shindig, right? I'm counting on you and Emily. We'll party like it's 1986. That's right. Because it will be. <laughs> Where were you in 1986? Um. We'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there, man. Absolutely. Of course we'll be there. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Best get back to it. See you, Mo. Bye now. Full-time waitress, part-time matchmaker. Don't they have, like, matchmaker? Like, there's... There, there is, like... Well, there is a simulation-esque job. Matchmaking agency that we've played a game that we played a demo of that hasn't released released yet And it was a lot of fun matchmaking agency might have been the name of the game. I did a video uh, on it um, But yeah it, it, I'll take it up. You were in high school in 1986 When did Red Dawn come out? Did Red Dawn come out in 86? I don't know what year Red Dawn came out Mm -mm. Hey Waffle, how are you? Merry Christmas to you. Diapers in 1986? <laughs> yeah. 
have a good one, Bad Ran, and good luck studying, too. 1984 is when it came out. 1984. Man, that movie is that old. Crazy. Charlie Sheen is like a very... He's a baby in that one, for sure. He's very baby. Baby-esque. Middle school, 1986. I was six months old on New Year's Eve, 1985 to 1986. I'll get it. Hello? Uh, uh, very good evening. A am I talking to Mrs. Uh, Emily Weiss? Yes, sir. That would be me. Ah, fantastic. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, my name is uh, Christian Carmichael, and I represent Fly Into Florida. Oh, God. Oh, uh, hi there. I, I have great news for you, Mrs. Weiss. It's been Boy. a while, but... Uh, Florida, Florida, Florida. Perhaps remember entering into our Fly Into Florida sweepstakes? Um, now that you mention it, I think so. Yeah. Was that the one on the back of the juice carton? That's the one. And I am more than happy to tell you that you are the winner of the grand prize. The grand prize? Wow, uh, fantastic. Um, I'm afraid I've forgotten what it was. Could you refresh my memory a little bit? Uh, uh no problem, Mrs. Weiss. Uh, you have won a two-week trip to Florida for two. Wow. Two weeks in Florida. Florida? Really? I won? I have never won anything in my life. Uh, hold on. I need to tell my husband. Honey, we won. I'm talking to a gentleman from Fly into Florida. And he says we've won a two-week holiday for two. Abina, hey, how you doing? Merry Christmas to you. Fantastic squid. Hello, how are you? What's going on? Good to see you. Tell him he's dreaming. It's probably a timeshare scam. No, no, no. Florida. Yeah, baby. Wow. <laughs> Get out of here. Florida? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Isn't it great? We are so Hopefully it's not happy. a scam, though. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You've got plenty of time to let it all sink in. Uh, next, we'll be sending you an extra special envelope. It will contain a confirmation letter, airline tickets, hotel tickets, and I totally forgot to say this earlier, a $500 check covering any additional expenses. Nice. Wow. I can't believe this is happening. Well, it most definitely is, Mrs. Weiss. And we'll be making sure you both have the time of your life. There's one thing I must stress. The dates can't be altered. So if you have plans for the first two weeks of September, this would be a great moment to change them. And I hope this answers all of your questions for now. Congratulations on winning. And we look forward to seeing you fly into Florida. Thank you. Bye. I, I think I need to sit down for a moment. Oh, Florida. Oh, uh, that's Robert. Sorry, honey. I, I can't celebrate with you right now. But I'll make it up to you tomorrow night at Moe's. Mm, I will hold you to that. <laughs> Have fun on the ice, hun. And when you start to freeze out there, just think of sunny Florida. Just think of sunny Florida. Oh, boy. Drilling a hole, get that fire pit going. Ice fishing's a lot of work. And it's cold, but we're fishing all right. Hmm, great stuff, Robert. Thanks for ta taking me along. Absolutely. <laughs> great stuff, Robert. Thanks for taking me along. No problem, Thomas. Wouldn't have enjoyed it half as much by myself. Man, it's nice out here. This setting could use a guitar. I know, he's still wearing his postal coat even after, like, even just relaxing. Hello, Bella. How are you? What's going on? Campfires and guitars not exactly fond memories. Excuse me? Wouldn't that scare the fish away? Some guitar tunes would sound nice right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Give me the guitar. Give me the guitar. Yeah. Guitar tunes would sound nice right now. It'd be a shame to disturb the peace now, though. Hey, what was Emily going on about when I picked you up? You guys are going to Florida? 
That's right. Yeah. Apparently, we won a two-week trip. Wow, congrats. Not that Florida's my cup of tea, if I'm honest. Some place you'd rather go? Hmm. Some place else you'd rather go? I'm perfectly fine staying right here. Oh, all right. Well, if you could choose to go anywhere, would you go anywhere? P.O. is great, but is it also a good place to meet someone? Uh, I know what you're hitting at. The answer's no, of course. But maybe this is what I need right now. Give it a little time. Yeah, just give it a little time. Or a lot. Nothing wrong with that. <sighs> Wouldn't it be ideal if Mrs. Wright dropped by my house one day? Um, this is kind of like a little foreshadowing. Certainly. And also quite improbable. But you never know. Let's drink to that. Would be a shame if Emily filled that flask of yours for nothing. <laughs> ha! Finally, a sensible remark. This is population Cheers. of 12 in this now town. Now let's catch a fish and get the hell out of here. What happened to the guitar, though? We didn't have the guitar? All right, very well. December 28th. Hey, Thomas, do you have a minute? What's up, Frank? Sure, Frank. What's up? Listen, I just got a heads up from one of my buddies at HQ. He said Walter Morgan left for P.O. with tires screeching. I, I need to lay low for a while. If you see him, you haven't seen me, okay? Gosh darn it, Frank. Ah, fine. Don't worry about him. Gotcha, Frank. Don't worry about him. I got Holy your back. Crap. Morgan's on the premises. I'm not here. Well, where'd you go? Good morning, Mr. Weiss. Oh. Uh, good morning, Mr. Morning. <laughs> oh, good morning, Mr. Morning. No, good morning, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Morgan. I'm looking for Frank. Could you tell me where he is, please? Uh, Frank? Frank Coleman? I haven't seen him here. Frank? Frank Coleman? Uh, haven't seen him here. And where is he if he's not here? Um... Probably out delivering? I mean, he's probably out delivering. Could be anywhere. Hmm. I guess I'll have to be patient then. Oh, crap. I received a report that a man with a mustache dressed in a light blue shirt was offering illegal fireworks to people in the postal office parking lot. If that man is Frank, and I'm sure it is, then that's strike three for Mr. Coleman. <sighs> Please tell him I'm looking for him. Have a good day. Is he gone? Yes, Frank. Holy crap, that was a close call. Thanks so much, Thomas. I guess Frank Coleman's going into hiding for a while. <laughs> He's out there wheeling and dealing the fireworks in the parking lot to your local kids, local juveniles. Them's the breaks. How's it going? Merry Christmas to you. Hope you are good. Yes, 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 yes. That sounds like a good idea, Frank. See you Sunday evening. I guess we'll have to play poker with the curtains closed. That's a weird way to... S okay. That's very strange of you to say there, Frank. Happy Saturday, everyone. Get ready for a pet pee from Joseph. P.O. Positive or pet pee? Jack, I've been watching that TV series everyone's been raving about. What, what's it called? A hamburger with fries? I expected a charming sitcom like Bon Appetit, but instead got treated to a lousy mix of mediocre puns and gratuitous filings. If this is where TV shows are heading, then I'm heading the other way. Oh boy. Oh, well, I'll bet you'll have the road all to yourself, Joseph. On to the weather. We're starting the day sunny, but we'll have lots of snow for you folks later on. Enough talking. Here are some tunes. Yeah, let's go play some poker, but we gotta make sure to have the curtains closed. Very well. Heron. Heron? Heron Circle. That's a big package. 
Make sure the curtains are closed. Nobody wants to see us playing poker. Drop the package. And yet another satisfied customer. You know, I do. I am the kind of person that um, rather not have, um, rather not have uh, the postman or anybody like knock on the door um, when they drop a package off. Luckily, I mean, I don't know. It depends on the post post driver. Sometimes they knock on the door. Sometimes they don't. I rather them not knock on the door. Fancy handwriting on this one. There we go. But then, like, some people would rather, because obviously you want to know if your package is at the door or not, but... No need to knock and get the dogs involved. <laughs> they get so angry. They, they, it's like the biggest, like... It's like the most offensive thing that you could do in the dog world. Is, like, knock on the door, run away, drop a package off. Is it on this side or that side? Maybe that side. Like, that's like the worst crime you could do. Dogs live, what? What is it? Like, seven dog years, seven year, or one year is like seven years in dog years, right? That crime is capital murder. That's dog capital murder. Knocking on the door, dropping a package off, running away. That's that's a death sentence. That's lifetime in prison right there. There we go. My dog lets me know when the postal service even sets foot on the property. It's insane. It's like almost like uh what would you say? I'm gonna come back to that package. It's almost like clockwork. It's like the dogs are like tuned to it. Super hearing. And I know dogs have like incredible hearing and all that, but I mean like that's, that's like to a whole nother level. If you don't mind, I'm gonna pull in real quick and then I'll pull out, turn it around. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to be back in this game. This game's fun. I like it. It's such a relaxing, cozy game. <laughs> My Shelty's alert, 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 alerted, alerted you if there was a stray leaf that wandered onto the property. <laughs> Gotta go check it out. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. There's a leaf that fell on the driveway. We gotta, we gotta investigate this. How did this get here? Another satisfied customer. Unless it's Bills. There we go. Two more packages. That's it. Pretty easy day today. Very, very easy. There we are. This is Lori. See how Lori's doing? Hey, Patrick. How's it going? You bought this DLC the other day, too. You need to play it? Oh, you definitely need to jump on it. For sure. For sure, for sure. Good to see you. I'm glad you bought it, though. Pretty good game. I hope the developers of this uh, do some more in the future, for sure. What the frick does that say? Basketball cords to car. Oh, basketball cards to trade. Sorry, I should have went to uh, him. Basketball cords. <laughs> hey, Ben. Yet another heavy package for you, Ben. Let me take that off your hands, Thomas. You know, I feel guilty enough as it is. Having you lug around those car parts week in and week out. That's the job. That's the job, Ben. 
Neither snow nor rain nor heavy packages stay these, these couriers, couriers from, from the, the swift, swift completion, completion of their, of their appointed, appointed rounds. rounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, though. If you don't mind me saying, you're getting up there. Oh, there's a Everything news van. Hanging up the old coat and bag? For retirement? Yeah, I mean... We can't have all of our daughters follow in our footsteps. Foreshadowing. Recently, yeah. Uh, not until recently, but recently? Yeah. Good for you. Think about it some more would be my advice. Son of a gun. Is the engine parts for the news van? Didn't expect them to come in so soon. This game, this DLC is set before the main game. Yeah, this is before. Now you'll be able, to, now they'll be able to roam around PO. Whoa. Hello. <laughs> oh, that's great. Now they'll be able to roam around PO for their report. Yep. With any luck, that thing will be up and running before the end of the day. Godspeed, my friend. And the same to you, old timer. Jules, thank you for the 17 months. Ozzy's leave beer up to Santa, so if you don't get what you want tonight, it's because he's probably drunk by the time he gets there. Enjoy Christmas. Thank you very much, Jules. I appreciate you. Thank you for that. Hope you're well, and Merry Christmas to you. Is Bella okay? Yeah, she's 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 right next to me. She's uh she's being a nut. Does she stub her toe? No, she she does I know it sounded weird, right? It's like a little cry. That's what it is. She's trying to get my attention. She wants to like I think she might want to jump in my lap. I might do that. Well, you want in my lap? She's on the chair right now, or the couch. Let's see. Come here. Come here. Come here. You want in my lap? Come here. Hang on a sec. I'll get her. All right, you're driving. Wow. Oh, yeah, hi. Yeah, how are you? Good to see ya. Okay, yep. I know. Luckily, this... You're lucky this game is easy to play with one hand. Two hands, multiple hands. There we go. She probably just wants to lay, sit in my lap is what she wants to do. Hey, subscribe. Related Christmas gift? Maybe. Bubbly Pandora, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Big ups to you. Ah, there you are. Could you bring this box over to the diner? And if they ask, there's no discount. Hmm, why not? Sure, why not? Thanks, and remember, no discount. Roger that. Has she been super cuddly? She has. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Hi. Hey, gamer chick. How's it going? Good to see ya.
You're a big baby. That's what you are. You're a big baby. She got a Willy Wonka doll in and she tore it up. She killed Willy Wonka last night. It was wonderful. Well, in her eyes, it was wonderful. Chilling on this Christmas Eve. Delivering packages, holding dachshunds. That's what we're doing. Hi, Thomas. Oh, please tell me that's a big box full of snacks from the general store. This is a big box full of snacks from the general store. But without a discount, because, you know, uh, Christmas is over, so, yeah. But without a discount on what's inside. No discount? Is Nancy Carlisle really trying to charge me full price for snacks that are about to go past their expiration dates? <laughs> that would be pretty sad, though. Yikes. That would be pretty sad. I can't believe people could be like that. That heartless creature. All right, let's just calm down. Happy New Year. Maureen, easy now. She just drives a hard bargain. Pardon my French, Thomas, but she always manages to drive me up a wall. I'll stop bothering you now. I'll think of something. Don't you worry. Oh. <laughs> Hey, the chick became a member. Miriam, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. I appreciate that. And thank you for the big super chat as well. Holy moly. Wendy the younger became a member. That was very, very, very kind of you. Very generous indeed. Thank you for that. That was very, very kind. Keisha Leanne became a member. Big ups to you, Miriam. Big ups to you indeed. And on behalf of those 10 people, we say. Thank you very much, Miriam. Darcy became a member. That was very kind of you. Very generous. I appreciate that 100%. Bella appreciates it too. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Bella appreciates it too. I promise she does. Jennifer Jimenez became a member. And Nugget, what are you doing? Michael Jirel de la Fuente became a member. Not Given became a member. You can't put your hand on the microphone or your paw. What are you doing? Hello, Thomas. Hello, Beth. Haley Smith became a member. Mm, hi there, Beth. What brings you here? I saw you arrive just now, so I decided to venture across the road with a minor Quora request. Quora and all became a member. Hmm. hmm. Kelly E became a member. What can I do for you? Sure thing. What can I do you for? It's just one small thing, I promise, and... Well, I suppose you can see what it is. A first gift to the little one, you see, since Merry Christmas, Christmas in Georgia to you, fell through. Danielle and all the critters. Just needs an address, and Thanks I'm not for sure all your it. hard work Could this I year. Leave this with you your so love you of what you sure do really shows, and go? I look forward I to hanging out with right you in 2024. It's the return address in the top corner. Thank you very much, Miriam. Thank you for that kind message, too. I appreciate that. Big ups to you. Thank you for that. That was very kind of you. Very kind indeed. And Happy New Year to you too, and Merry Christmas to you as well. Of course, Beth. I can understand that labeling a package like this can seem daunting. Bears will do that to you. <laughs> You're a real gentleman, Thomas. Thank you. I have a stack of returned holiday gifts that need sorting before I close. Have a good one, Faith Gaming. Do take care. Have a wonderful Christmas lunch too as well. 
I've handled many a strange parcel in my day. Not to worry. I'll take care of it. Thank you, Thomas. Truly. I'll get the postage to you later, I promise. Oh, and please tell Emily I have a great idea for this Sunday's girls' night. Oh. It's a surprise. Bye now. Sunday's girls' night. <laughs> sure. Enjoy the rest of your day. It's not poker with the curtains closed, right? Saturday afternoon. Is this Meredith? Hello? It is. Hi, Meredith. It's us. Your dad is standing right next to me. Hi, uh... Hi! Shouldn't you two be at Moe's right now? <laughs> yeah, we're about to jump in the car, but we wanted to share some exciting news with you. Oh, uh, first things first, though. How was your Christmas? Well, I worked. <laughs> and Tess and I made a Christmas meal you probably won't ever find in a cookbook. But we had a lovely evening. Thanks, Mom. Can I get the exciting news now, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your dad and I will fly into Florida this September. I want a sweepstakes. Get out of here. Wow, that's so awesome, Mom. Florida in September <laughs> beats the P.O. weather, huh? Oh, sure does. Dad, are you excited as well? Lady Fluffy Dragon! Merry Christmas to you Cans, Danielle, Mercy, Bella and the Piggies and to everyone in chat. Love from the Fluffy Dragons in our palace. Oh, thank you very much Lady Fluffy Dragon. That was very kind of you as well. Big ups to you and Merry Christmas to you Lady Fluffy Dragon. Appreciate you. Thank you. I would definitely give Bella a treat here if I had one. I don't have any on my, on my desk right here. I forgot them in the kitchen this morning. But thank you, thank you, Lady Fluffy Dragon. I sure am. Of course, Dad's ready for some Florida, Florida, baby. Last time you came to visit, it took a few hours for that green tinge to leave your face. <laughs> oh, hey, Meredith, Nelson. Don't make it worse than it was. Fine, fine. Maybe he just boozed too much on the plane. Have you checked if the flight includes free cocktails? Best bring your flask, Dad, just in case. Good to see you, Nelson. If you were here, Santa might have given you one. Ooh, yeah, give it to give it to her like that, yeah. <laughs> if you were here for Christmas, you might have gotten one from Santa. Oh well, I may not have been there, but at least my boss called to interrupt your dinner. Sorry about that, by the way. Rest assured, he was appropriately ashamed. <sighs> we all make mistakes, Meredith. Some of us just more than others. <laughs> I can't disagree there. Oh, hey, you two shouldn't keep Maureen waiting. <laughs> You're right about that. Your dad will go and get the car warmed up, right, honey? Ah, uh, well, I guess so. That's my cue. That's my cue. Bye, Em. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Have fun tonight. Thanks for getting the car all toasty for us, honey. You're very welcome, my dear. It's my pleasure. You're very welcome, dear. It's my pleasure. <sighs> We've been doing this for decades now, and I've never stopped looking forward to spending my Saturday evening here with you. Kind of hits a little bit home, because yesterday, Danielle and I uh, celebrated our five-year anniversary, our five-year wedding anniversary. Uh... We've been married five years. We've been together for 12 years. And um, we kind of had, we went out to a, a little restaurant, had some appetizers, um, had a little bit of rolls, if you've ever been to a Texas roadhouse. And uh, then we went to the mall, kind of looked around and uh, yeah, that was pretty, pretty much our day or our night last night, last evening. Decades, don't say that out loud. Makes me feel old. Okay, okay. But we're not young anymore. Can I say that? Good evening, you two beautiful people. Ready to order? Or should I just write down pancakes for lovely Emily and a T-bone steak for Big Thomas here? Oh, Maureen, your intuition never ceases to amaze me. It sure is pancake time for me again. 
Thank you all. Thank you all for the congrats. I appreciate it. Thank you. Big Thomas would very much like that. A big T-bone steak, please. Hold the ketchup. <laughs> big Thomas would very much like that, Maureen. Thanks. You got it. Be right back, folks. Ashley, it's pancake time. And get the steaks out. <laughs> this will never get old. But Beth making surprise plans Merry Christmas and, and happy holidays, trip everyone. In our lab got me thinking a little bit. If we're getting close to being able to do whatever we feel like doing, does that mean we should stay in PO forever? Thank you very much, Freya, for that, for the super chat and your first ever super chat with us. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, very kind of you. Big ups to you. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate you. That was very kind of you. I've always dreamed about living in Florida. Personally. Maybe not dream about it, but always had to thought about it. Florida sure sounds like a nice place. Lots of fishing. No ice. The warmth is the main selling point for me, I must admit. And it's not like your arthritis will stop acting up in weather like this. Your birthday was yesterday and you went to Texas Roadhouse yesterday? My gosh, small world, Ginger. Happy birthday to you, Ginger. That's awesome. <laughs> You how many how many uh, rolls did you have? Did you have a lot of rolls? Because we had like three baskets of rolls. Yeah, you best believe it. I am looking forward to that Florida trip. The more I think about it, it's a perfect opportunity to test the waters. Oh, wasn't it nice the way Meredith reacted to the news? Although I'm sure she's a little envious. Hey, Candy Lady, how are you? Yeah, when's the last time she had a few days off and left the big smoke? Okay, folks, while Ashley's busy in the kitchen, it's time to fill Moe in on a few details. A little birdie told me you two were off somewhere fancy. <laughs> Maureen, I was planning on telling you and the girls all about it tomorrow evening. But I'm sure you've also heard it's Florida in September. Now, Florida honestly, in September. Oh, yes. Imagine that. Oh, I'm so happy for you too. Thanks, Maureen. Now, I've been to Florida in September. I've been to Florida in many different times. I've been to Florida in like January, February, September, November, all different kinds of months. I will have to say, September was the worst month of all time being in Florida. So hot so humid so rainy on and off so terrible <laughs> i think that's like uh what is it that's like hurricane season too right have you ever been to florida are you offering your ticket to me oh thomas that's so nice of you nice try maureen nice try but the only one sitting next to me on that plane is my man oh are you totally sure about that though I heard that a certain Walter Morgan will probably not be very lenient with holiday requests from the postal office employees. Whoa. Morgan, his bark is always worse than his bite. Would he really get in the way of our Florida trip? No, no, no. That's when you retire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Morgan. His bark is always worse than his bite. If Walter Morgan gets in the way of that, I'll get in his way. Oh. I don't think I'm supposed to actually run away, but uh, sure, all right. Oh, that means dinner's almost ready. Be right back, folks. See, things like this, they bother me sometimes. Maureen's a sweetheart, but it's almost impossible to have a private life here. That sure is true. I kind of like knowing everyone would be nice to be somewhere where I'm not the mailman. Hmm. He does bring up good points. Would be nice to walk around yeah. somewhere without everyone calling you mailman. 
That's a good thing about working at the motel. Most of the people I'll never see again. Oh, Maureen's heading this way again. Let's just enjoy our lovely dinner together, shall we? We shall. Have a good one, Panic. Do take care. Thanks for becoming a member today. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you as well. Yes. I don't like saying I could eat a horse. Have I already told you that you look wonderful tonight? There you go. Uh, have I already told you that you look wonderful tonight? Look alive, folks. Two plates of the good stuff. Have a good one, Lady Fluffy Dragon, as well. Do take care. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, Thomas, my dear, sweet husband. The one and only. No autographs. You've got a chore for me, don't you? Um. <clears throat> no, we'll, we'll, we'll be funny with it. The one and only. No autographs. Yeah. Oh, the sweetest man alive. Always prepared to help out anyone who asks for a favor. I knew even it. on his Sunday off. All right. Okay, Em. What needs doing? The motel called and, well, the TV crew would very much like to rent some movies from the Flick Shack today. But I couldn't just let poor little Angie ferry them over in this weather. So... I must deliver them, yeah. So you're driving over there yourself? You promise them I do it? So you promise them I do it? Bingo! Yes, yeah. you dear. Pretty please. No problem. You've been so busy lately. You've been working your tail off. Yes, I will help you out. Of course, Em. You've been so busy lately. It'll be my pleasure. Oh, thank you so much, darling. Tell you what, I'll make some extra tasty snacks for your poker night tonight. Oh. How's that? It's a deal. Nice. That's Thomas a good deal. Weiss, as I live and breathe, what in tarnation are you doing out and about in the mail truck on a Sunday? Yeah, he. it's a good point. It's not mail day. And you're using company property. And you're wearing federal, a federal uniform on non-operating hours. To do a personal errand. This does kind of seem not good. Um, possibly a fireable offense here. Yeah. Came to pick up some movies for the TV crew. Came to pick up some movies for the TV crew. Oh, I know. Your wife called ahead. Hey, Alex. Merry Christmas to you. How are you? Good to see you. Hope you're well. Uh, uh, happy to do it for Emily and for you. Happy to do it for Emily and for you and for the TV crew. E.T. behind? Parts of it. Terminator? <laughs> but first things first. So, what's the hot gossip on these out-of-towners? Well. Mm, there's Gabriel Serrano. He's the sound guy. Yeah. There's Gabriel Serrano. He's Rano? the sound guy. Nice guy. Full of vim and vigor. Marine seems to think he has a crush on Ilsa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maureen seems to think he has a crush on Ilsa Richter. Let's get into the gossip. Hmm. Yeah, that may well be mutual. Oh. What about the rest? Uh, Ilsa is the producer. Ilsa Richter is their producer. Is that Dirty Dancing behind there, too? I can't tell. Um, competent, sarcastic, reminds me of my daughter. Competent, sarcastic... She kind of reminds me of my daughter. <laughs> well, then I'd like to meet your daughter someday. Oh. Because Ilsa I've met came into the store yesterday asking about P.O. and whether I liked it here. Cute as a button, that one. And only in town for a couple days. Perfect for a girl on the rebound. <laughs> Shame she's into men. One in particular. Um. Are you sure? How do you figure? Are you sure? How do you figure? The way her eyes lit up when she mentioned that colleague of hers, Gabriel. Ah, right, okay. Trust me, a girl knows. So anyway, let's get down to brass tacks. According to Emily, our intrepid reporters have two rooms equipped with VCRs between them. One for 
Connor Price, KNW6, and one for Ilsa Richter. <laughs> Great. I know what we should get for Connor. All the President's Men, a tape on how to win friends and influence people. Network. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Got any motivational tapes on how to win friends and influence people? <laughs> Great idea. But Connor's already made his pick. Octopussy. It says it's James Bond's all-time high. I guess they forgot about that time you went to the moon. Fine by me. And what did Ilsa choose? All right, so octopusy That's for him? That's where we come in. Oh. <laughs> See, she wants us to pick the movie she'll be watching with her colleague, Gabriel. Oh. Thomas, she wants us to pick the movie she'll be watching with Gabriel. Random emphasis has not helped me. No, 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 Thomas, no. We play matchmaker by picking something romantic. I just realized the Christmas barrel is a Christmas carol. We can play matchmaker by picking something romantic. Give them pause? Exactly. Guide Cupid's arrows, so to speak. After all, tis the season. To be jolly, what does that have to do with anything? Okay, calm down. For a little post Christmas magic, maybe? I'd say Valentine's Day, the season, but point taken. Uh, no, no, no. Post Christmas magic is always doable. For a little post Christmas magic? Yeah. Maybe. You and Emily are regular customers, so you know what I have available. So, which film will it be? Have a good one, Diamond Cat. Take care. Thanks for hanging out with us as well. Indeed. Have a Merry Christmas, too. What about Scarface? Yeah, that seems about right. <laughs> Trading places. That's the one. That's a that's that one's a hoot and a half. Or let's go with love story. Now this would be a perfect time to throw in Scarface. Let's go with love story. Or is that too on the nose? It's perfect, and we won't risk being too subtle. It has love right there in the title. <laughs> <laughs> Great, love story it is. <laughs> the dynamic duo of stupid Cupid strikes again. Although I suppose this is our first strike. Anyway, here's hoping that this is the start of a beautiful love story. <laughs> I have a good feeling about this. I do too. I have a good feeling about this. Anyway, I'd best be on my way getting these to the motel. Yeah, thanks for doing this, Thomas. My car, much like myself, is not built for snow. Say hi to Emily. Will do. Bye, Angie. I just saw in the background. Did you see that? No! I want to see. Yes. Look at this. I just saw this. Um, look at Space Wars. Star Wars. Right there on my forehead. Well, not my forehead. His forehead. But yeah. Oh, a Christmas gory. Oh, God. Oh, God. A Christmas gory? Oh, man. That doesn't sound good. A Christmas gory? The Terminator. The Friendly Dead? Must be the Evil Dead. The Good, the Bad, and the Duck Feet? The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, maybe? seeing if there's more the glue lagoon the glue lagoon i believe is the blue lagoon yeah meh man or superman eh meh man interesting they need a die hard here did die hard come out in 1985 when did die hard come out what year was that I don't know what this is. Hound of Music? I'm not sure what that is. Here we go. Yeah, the Breakfast Club. Yeah, the brunch... The brunch... Oh, crap. See, this is why you don't drive on a Sunday. The Brunch Bunch. 
Die Hard was in 1989. Hey, okay, question for chat. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes or no? Yes or no? Christmas movie? Yes? 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 No? Yes. You bet it is? Okay, let me ask you a question. Would you... Okay. Okay, let me ask you this. Is Polar Express a Christmas movie? Yes. 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 Okay, you know what? Polar Express was a bad, uh, bad example. But what if I told you Polar Express came out in July? Would you still count it as a Christmas movie? Of course, because it's Christmas. But a terrible example. But w would it be weird if a Christmas movie came out in July? Because I think that's when Die Hard came out. I think Die Hard came out in July. I don't think Die Hard came out during Christmas time. Correct me if I'm wrong though. When did it release? When did Die Hard release? You don't think it's weird to come out in July? I know, I know. Polar, okay, Polar Express, bad example. Bad example. Ever heard of Christmas in July? I mean, I've heard of it, but what does it actually mean? Right? What does it actually mean? July 20th, 1988. Oh my gosh. Uh, whoops. Special delivery. <laughs> A Halloween movie came out in Christmas time. That's just bad marketing. Do you think that? Well, no, I guess not. Die Hard became became a staple, huh? <clears throat> That's true. Movie came out in July. Maybe they would have VHS ready by Christmas time. That's true. That's very true. Movies from the Flick Shack. Right. Well, great news. You get to play belated Santa yourself. Room six for Richter. Thank you. Now, just because a movie happens during Christmas, does it make it a Christmas movie? That's the real question. Because it happens during Christmas. That's like, I'm sure there's some sort of movie out there that escapes my my mind that a setting happened during christmas but doesn't make it a christmas movie i think of paul blart is that a thanksgiving movie is paul blart a thanksgiving movie they have thanksgiving they celebrate thanksgiving in the movie would you i guess that's a terrible example too Right. I will. Good day. It's like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, maybe? I don't know. Maybe not. Terrible example, too. I'm not having a good, uh, good time backing myself up here now, ain't I? Movie delivery for segment producer Ilsa Arita. Uh, movie delivery for segment producer Ilsa Richter. Yes. God damn it, oh, Connor. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Price. I thought this was Ilsa's room. It is. Uh, no, that's room nine. Uh, but think nothing of it, my guy. 
Ooh, you got me my Bond movie. I did. Just like Harry Potter is not a Christmas movie. There we go. Would you consider Harry Potter a Christmas movie? <laughs> Planes, trains, automobiles, Thanksgiving. That's true. That's during Thanksgiving time. Yes, sir. Apparently, it's James Bond's all-time high. Love it. You know, more's an even better 007 than Connery. He just oozes that classy British wit. Thank you so much. Nightmare Before Christmas. Christmas or Halloween? I would say Christmas. Because it's Christmas in the title. And it's based around bad, being a bad Santa. No? A naughty Santa, in a way. Scream came out before Christmas Day and is not a Christmas movie. Well, it's the same with Aquaman. Aquaman came out two days ago. Wonka came out. Movie delivery. A movie delivery for Ilsa Richter. Yay. Good to see you, Thomas. So, what movie did you and Angie pick for me and Gabe? Here you go. Love story. Hmm. Haven't seen this one. What's it about? Tennis? Bad Santa? Funny movie. Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, no, actually, it's about... I'm joking. I'm sure it's a story about love of some kind. Let me guess. This was Angie's pick. It was a group effort. Well... Let's just say it was a group effort. Okay. Well, color me curious. Hope it's age appropriate for big old puppy dogs. Oh, speaking of, on your way out, could you give a quick knock on Gabe's door? Just so he'll know it's movie time. It's room number two. Will do. Great. See ya. It's movie time, Gabe. It's movie time. Nice. Nice. Gabe, movie time. Gabriel Serrano, the lady in room nine requests your presence. Gabriel Serrano, the lady in room number nine humbly requests your presence for an evening of home cinema. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. I'll be right over. My work here is done. Okay, Ben. Question for you. Do you have that ace or not? You don't have to say yes or no. Just say anything. Poker with the All curtains I closed. All I need to hear is one word from you to know if you're bluffing. I know the mailman has to do everything. Nothing. Not even a twitch or a blink. All right. I'll do the talking. I'm all in. Call. Oh. And he just instantly calls me. Great. I don't even need to see your hand. Well played, sir. Thanks, Jack. You got unlucky there. I don't know. I just don't have the patience for poker. You know, reading a poker book ain't going to change that. Hey, Thomas. Why are the curtains closed, by the way? Last time I checked, home games are legal. It's probably better if Frank answers that question. Oh, I don't know. Just feels more cozy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cozy, cozy. Oh, I don't know. Just feels more cozy, I guess. <laughs> Thomas, we don't need to keep this a secret. Walter Morgan's on my tail. Someone snitched on me, and now I need to lay low until I have a good enough alibi. Morgan again? What'd you do, Frank? I hope you didn't put ladies' underwear in his briefcase again. And please tell me you stopped putting dead rats in his exhaust. <laughs> the classics. No, I didn't prank him at all this time. Okay. He's just out to get me. All I did was sell fireworks to someone. He said something about that being my third strike. I might actually lose my job, fellas. 
we won't let that happen well i don't think there's anything we can really say about that uh don't you think he's bluffing don't you think he's bluffing frank i'm afraid not thomas i'm not gonna call his bluff in any case i just need a plan I'm guessing they don't have any photographic evidence. Any pictures of you selling these fireworks? Just that there's a guy fitting my description. What are you getting at? <laughs> I might have a little plan. But let's first play a few more hands. I'm down almost 30 bucks. One sec, Jack. Frank, I'm curious. We know Walter Morgan has a few reasons to dislike you, but why do you dislike him? Hmm, I could tell you why, but it's not a pretty tale. And it better not leave this room. Uh-oh. Uh, kitchen. Oh, God. Sure, Frank. My lips are sealed, for once. Frank, I'm not sure if I can keep another secret for you. No, 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 no. Come on, Thomas. Don't be the odd man out here. You know I'm no snitch, Frank. Thanks, boys. All right. So this one time back in the summer of 69, <laughs> it was before I started working in PO. Good reference. There were a couple of pesky stray dogs wandering around HQ. I say pesky, but they never really hurt anyone. Just got a little excited if you walked past them eating a sandwich or whatever. Can't blame them, huh? They were hungry, even though I fed them every now and then. Morgan found out, of course, and after one complaint too many, he took matters into his own hands, or should I say, feet. He lured a couple of them behind his car, and before I knew what was going on, it was too late. I heard a loud and gut-wrenching howl. I saw two dogs run away, and Smokey, my favorite one, limped after them. It's the last time I ever saw those sweet dogs. Then Walter Morgan looked me straight in the eye with a smug grin on his face, and he said, this is how you do a proper job, Frank. I can still see that grin when I close my eyes. Okay, that does it. Walter Morgan is now on my eternal shit list. Wow. And I'll make sure the rest of P.O. knows about it. Back in the summer of 69. Hello, Nebraska. Merry Christmas to you. Frickin' Morgan, we need to take it to the next level. My God. Also threw a couple of kittens out the window, right? Uh, poor Smokey. Dogs can survive a broken leg, right? Well, not entirely. Not all dogs. Did he actually throw some kittens out the window? Didn't he also throw a couple of kittens out the window the very same day? <laughs> what a despicable human being. I can't believe he did that. Well... <laughs> he didn't. Okay. I was joking, of course. Oh. I don't really have a good reason for disliking Walter Morgan. That boring old pencil pusher just rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Frank, you had us good. He did, okay, he did. Folks, Annie up. Here we go again. Well, I mean, I'm not disappointed that that didn't happen, but I'm disappointed that he was joking around, nonetheless. December 30th, almost New Year's Eve. Psst, Thomas, over here. Hey, Frank. Uh, thanks for filling up the dumpster. What the frick? What are you doing? What are you doing there? I'm trying to stay out of sight. Looks like Morgan will be at the post office all day. Listen up. Jack and I cooked up a little plan. I'm sure Morgan will be gone soon, but I gotta get out of here now. You haven't seen me. I believe him, too. It was a bad joke. I know. Terrible joke. Who jokes about that? What? How are you? Good to see you. Welcome back. All right. Time to deliver some mail. I have Top a... Top of the Monday morning, P.O. That was We're loud. starting this week with a warning from Lucinda. P.O. Positive <laughs> or Pet P. Hi, Jack. KNW6 TV crews filming in PO yesterday with Connor Bryce. As a big fan, I just had to ask him for an autograph. Oh my gosh. He asked me for my name, but he kept calling me Linda. <laughs> Even after I corrected him twice. Isn't that just rude? Well, that's a bit rude indeed, Linda. <laughs> I mean, Lucinda, of course. About that. The weather prediction for today, bright but chilly. Enjoy your day and the music. 
every day every morning when i went to, when i was in when i was in school every morning we would be driving to uh school and early in the morning they had this radio talk show going on and it was like by the queue there and like for some reason the radio talk show would like they had like this the, i don't know i'm assuming it was probably a skit to some degree but every morning it was to like like how to catch a cheater kind of thing and like the dj would call or like somebody would call in like a like a husband a boyfriend a girlfriend a wife would call in and be like i think my significant other is cheating on me right and then like they would get their significant they would give their significant other's phone number to the dj and then the dj would call this person and then like try to romance this person then catch them in the act and then like while catching them in the act the person of in the person who gave the number the, the 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 couple that had this complaint would be on the other line or like would be on it would be like a conference call and be like okay we're gonna call jim here we're gonna give him a call and see they still do it yeah like oh we're gonna Yeah, 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 they would be like, they would be like, okay, hey, uh, you know, they call like Jim. Hey, Jim. Like, okay, so, all right, let me, let me rework the story. Ready? <laughs> Fancy. Uh, someone named Veronica calls in and says, hey, I think my boyfriend is cheating on me. Can you help me? And the DJ's like, yeah, can you give me his number? And then she gives his, his number to the DJ and the DJ calls Jim and they say jim hey jim you've won a free thing of bouquet flowers would you like to you know send this to somebody you love in your life right and then like they jim would be like yeah can i send this to amy <laughs> and then like veronica would be on the line and then like veronica would freak out and be like who's this amy who's this amy how dare you i knew there was somebody else you son of a bitch and then he's like that's my mom you know stuff like that like she hadn't met his mom or something they would do stupid stuff like that they still do it apparently i don't listen to the radio though okay i listen to spotify to its destination Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hey, Stasia. How's it going? Good to see you. Did they announce that they were on the radio? No, they would pretend like they were not on the radio. But that's why I feel like it was a skit. But they would do it every morning. There would be like some something happening every morning. Is that what it is? War of the Roses? Is that what it's called? Something like that, something similar to that. Is that what it, is that what it's actually called? By the way, hello, Lacey. How are you? Yeah. It's, oh, sorry, honey. I uh, forgot to tell you that I have a wife. <laughs> I forgot to tell my girlfriend that I have a wife. Ugh. It, it, it was like funny to listen to on the way to school and then like we would get dropped off at school and be like All right time to F the day here <laughs> mm. Still listen to war of roses whenever we can it's good entertainment. No, it is It's something to do it's something to do right while you're driving or i guess listening to the radio oh this is a uh, mildred's house the crazy cat lady and she got cat on her mailbox uh-oh oh thomas hello there could you be a sweetheart and bring that over to me uh, of course oh careful now robert cleared most of the snow but it's still a bit slippery Thank you so much. If only I still had the balance and agility of my feline friends. 
Oh, and good day to you, of course. Sometimes I sit in my car to finish listening to it. <laughs> good day to you, Mildred and Genevieve. Genevieve? <laughs> or is it more to more? Good day to you too, Mildred and Genevieve. Thomas, honestly. Yeah, it's more to more. This isn't Genevieve. It's Mortimer. Mortimer. Look nothing alike. Isn't that right, Mortimer? <laughs> oh, pardon me. I can't quite keep track of all your cats. Well, I do have a lot of them, but not quite as many as there are streets in Providence Oaks, and you can keep those apart. So, what do you have for me today, Thomas? Just a letter. Let's see. Bills? Mm, this sounds interesting. Scam? Apparently. I need to make a few copies of this letter, and if you send this letter along with five dollars to the first six people on this list, your name will be added to the bottom. Soon enough, your name will rise to the top. Pyramid scheme. Then many people will send you five dollars. You will earn Pyramid lots scheme. of money with one small investment. Oh, what a great idea! What do you think, Mortimer? Uh, knock yourself out, Mildred. That's a classic chain letter scam. Mildred, that's a classic chain letter scam. Don't fall for it. No one ever got rich off of one of those. Well, except for the post office. <laughs> Are you sure, Thomas? They make it sound so easy. If they make it sound so easy, then everybody would be doing it, right? There's no such thing as a free lunch, sadly. Trust me on this, Mildred. Trust me on this, Mildred. If you've seen one pyramid scheme, you've seen them all. Hmm. $30 is quite a bit of money. I'll think about it. You do that, Mildred. See you at Moe's tomorrow night? Probably. Bye, dear. They still do that stuff. Last pyramid scheme that was offered to me was involving cosmetics. Like, beauty cosmetics. So lame, dude. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. There's only one person that wins in all of that, right? <laughs> only one person. There we go. So I think I'm assuming I'm assuming this game will end or the DLC will end when we get to the New Year's with this like huge, like big send off that Frank has in store for us with this all these fireworks and whatnot. So we might be coming to the end here very soon. What the hell are you in the car no, drive driveway there? Dear cans, an African prince wants you to send them money. Yes, I actually get emails quite a bit. Uh, not African prince, but I get uh, quite a bit of emails about like, hey, my name is Elizabeth, and I won a very specific number of three hundred and twenty-seven million dollars. And I am going to be sending out 300 or I'm going to be sending out. I'm going to be dividing it into 20 and be sending it out to 20 people. I found I came across you and I would like to I would like you to be one of those 20 people. All I need is your social security number, your bank number, your home address, your phone number, and I can send you this money. Don't do it! What the heck is the news station doing here? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, that's true. Could have pointed out that how would her name reach the tops? Yeah, that's okay, true. Are we rolling? We're rolling. We're rolling. Okay, let's get this in one. I'm freezing my ass off. <clears throat> 
When Chekhov scene. saw the long winter, he saw a winter bleak and dark and bereft of hope. Yet we know that winter is just another step in the cycle of life. In the summer months, this lake is bustling with activity. As the local fishermen cast their rods, the tourists plunk down hard-earned cash to rent a boat and spend a delightful sun-soaked day on the water. Not so during this particularly harsh winter, however. Now the watery heart of Providence Oaks finds itself completely frozen over. No, uh, that won't do as an analogy because now we're sort of implying that residents have grown cold-hearted during the winter. Doesn't work, doesn't scan. Yeah, and um, what was with that Chekhov stuff? I don't get it. Chekhov? Like from Star Trek? <laughs> all right, all right. Let's try something else. Wait, hey, wait a minute, Mr. Postman. How's it going? Hey, Pat, how you doing? Hi, Mr. Price. Did you enjoy that movie last night? Octopussy? Hi, Mr. Price. Uh, did you enjoy the movie last night? Uh huh. Hey, listen, how about I ask you a couple of questions on camera? Just simple stuff uh, about the town. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, I'd be happy to. Great. Just uh, move over here. Are we both in the shot? Yeah, that's fine. This'll be great. The lake is a backdrop. Perfect. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. This is... His name is Thomas Weiss. I knew that. Thomas and I go way back. <clears throat> As the local mailman for... Truly countless years, Thomas Weiss knows Providence Oaks like he knows the back of his own hand. So, Mr. Weiss, how would you characterize this small, cold town and its warm, warm inhabitants? Uh, that's easy, Connor. That's easy, Connor. Whether you're new in town or not, what clear is... Whether you're new in town or have lived here for ages... What's clear is this. Providence Oaks. Providence Oaks. Cannot be summed up in a single sound bite. Seems simple, but has its complexities. Cannot be summed up in a single sound bite. But one thing's for certain. But one thing's for certain. When the low winter sun hits the water. When the low winter sun hits that shimmering water just right, you realize this is the most beautiful place imaginable. This ah, is the most beautiful good. place imaginable. And you'll know what will always ring true is or and what whenever and wherever you are or whatever you face. And wherever you are or whatever you face, this is home. Here, a goodbye never has to be a farewell. Ooh. This is home. Yeah, I like that. And cut. Ah, oh, that's so sweet, Thomas Weiss. Completely unusable. Ah. Oh. Sweet. I know I've got goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, that went well, kind of. Now, let's scout out the establishing shots at the far end of the pier. They didn't let's like go, it? Connor. Aye, aye, Captain. Gabe, you can take five. My advice would be to take those five in the van oh. to reduce the risk of any further ass freezing off incidents. Oh. Noted. Thanks, Elsa. Very interesting. Yeah, one of the big scams nowadays, at least here, is like if you go to the gas station and you see somebody at the gas pump and they approach you and they are like, hey, my family's in the car. Uh, we've ran out of gas. We don't have enough money or uh, We don't have enough money to, to get back home and they have like children in the car and they have like uh, Their wife in the car or girlfriend whoever it might be And they're like hey, we'll Another sell you satisfied customer Unless it's bills. I'll sell you my gold necklace or I'll sell you these diamond earrings that are real I'm, all I'm asking is for like $20 or I'm asking for $50, right? And then those are like just fake 
necklaces, fake earrings, and things like that. Mr. Weiss, uh, Thomas, sir? Hi, Gabriel. What's up? Just that, well, we'll be ringing in the new year right here in Providence Oaks. So, my mom is shipping over my tuxedo. <laughs> Can you make sure it arrives okay? She says she clearly marked the package Serrano Room 2. Oh, of course. Mailman's promise. Any reason you want to look uh, your best? Oh, no, 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 no. How did movie night go? Yeah. So, how did you and Ilsa like the movie? Oh, man, it was beautiful. Heavy stuff, though. At the end, Ilsa totally had tears in her eyes. Nice. And, well, so did I. <laughs> there is something else I wanted to ask you about. I guess... I'm curious, how did you, like, woo your wife? <coughs> Excuse me? <coughs> woo my wife? Um, she's my high school sweetheart. Uh, it's pretty simple and cliched. <laughs> uh, she's my high school sweetheart. Uh, I took her to the fairy tale dance. We snuck off to smooch under the bleachers. And the rest is ancient history. But I'm guessing that doesn't help you with what you really want to know. This is 1985. This is before The Sims came out. So wooing meant something else. Hmm. And that's none of my business. It's between you and Ilsa. Shh, keep it down. Don't mention her name. <laughs> but yeah, I'm terrible at that kind of stuff. It's just, you seem like a wise man, wise man. <laughs> I'd really appreciate your advice. Well, okay then. My advice. Hmm. Follow your heart or go for it. Go for it, either or. Follow your heart, go for it. Follow your heart, follow your heart, follow, yes. Is to think about how things felt last night. Let that guide your decision. There you go. It might sound corny, but you can't go wrong following your heart. Wow. And is that your definitive judgment? That's the best I can do. Yeah, that's the best I can do. Absolutely. That's the best I can do. All done. Hey, oh, you guys just show up? what are you two schmoozing about? Uh, a mailman never tells. A mailman never tells. <laughs> Excellent. Now start the engine, Gabriel. We're rolling out pronto. Man, a lot of it's cold today. On it, Mr. Price. Thanks, Thomas. You've been a huge help. So take good care of that tux, yeah? Will do. Bye, folks. A mailman does have maybe like the whole neighborhood secrets, right? In a way. It's a good point. Hey, Matt and Do Gaming. How are you? Thank you for the one month. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Big ups to you. Hope you're well. All right. And that was the last. No, that wasn't the last. Oh, right. We have a package and a couple of letters to still do. All right. I think we're going to Moe's Diner now. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to Maureen. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you. Five hundred Lake Wood, Lake Road, not Lakewood. Part and parcel. <laughs> Who's in there? Oh, it's uh, it's oh god, is that Beth? That might be Beth. Hello, Beth. Hi there, ladies. Hi, Thomas. There's Kay. Hello, Thomas. I uh, got a delivery for the diner. Well, this looks cozy. No, we got a delivery. Got a delivery for the diner, Kay. Great. Not from the general store, I see. Um, you tell me. I only look on the address label. You tell me. All the information I usually need is on the address label. Uh, oh well. Okay, so before I leave, we had this awesome girls night yesterday thanks to Beth. It was hilarious. When I first saw where we were going, my brain went, oh my god. And when the guy showed us what we were going to do, my brain went, oh my god. And when we started, it was so yuck but also so cool you know i've never done anything like that before and i love that i got a chance to find out but then again i doubt that i will ever try it again <laughs> oh yes the girls night 
what did you end up doing? I'm curious. Maybe I shouldn't. Hello, Sim Aviation. How are you? What did you end up doing? We made haggis. What is that? You made what is? Gesundheit? Yes. Oh, Gesundheit. I said haggis. <laughs> it's a Scottish dish made from a sheep's liver, lungs, heart, and suet, all Ew. stuffed into a sheep's stomach. Ooh. It's this fascinating traditional gourmet staple stemming from the 15th century. Would you believe? Poems have been written about it. Uh, meat on top of meat? Sound like the beginning of a very bad limerick? Hmm, it does sound like the beginning of a very bad limerick. <laughs> there once was a lass from St. Lagus. <laughs> it was so gross. I'll have nightmares about zombie sheep for weeks. Bleh. Okay, hate to leave you two, but I really have to sort out this delivery ASAP. Or Maureen will go bananas. Talk soon. Thanks again for the great evening, Beth. It's a love it or Bye. hate it dish. Bye, Kay. Well, now, I really should get back to the grind as well. Those New Year's price reductions aren't going to fix themselves. I'm going to safely say I probably won't like it. Uh, hold on, Beth. Quick word about Saturday. Uh, hold on, Beth. Quick word about Saturday. Oh, what's on your mind? Is everything all right? Uh, is everything okay? Yes, I'm fine. Don't you worry about me, Thomas. I'm fit as a fiddle. You now, a giant if that's pearl all, necklace. I really need to get back to the bookstore. Beth, come on. You have been acting a bit strange lately. What do you mean? Are you sure there's nothing wrong? Okay. You've got me. Can we sit down here for a bit? Sit down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Heavens, I do feel a bit caught out. But I have to admit, it does warm my heart to know that I cannot fool my friends. Well... Out with it, Beth. You see, it's my eyes, Thomas. I have glaucoma, which means my optic nerve is oh, deteriorating. No. I found out a few months ago. Oh, oh, that's terrible. Especially being like a librarian and all that, having your own bookstore. Oh man. Oh my gosh, Beth, that's terrible. Thank you. It was a bit of a shock at first. I haven't told Emily yet. Daniel knows. It's not that bad yet, but it's not getting any better either. The thing is, this kind of condition happens slowly. And I haven't been the fastest in getting it treated, but they can stabilize it. That's why I wasn't able to fix the parcel on my own last Saturday. And that's why I'm starting to miss a few details here and there when I'm in the store. Oh. Asking for peas instead of beans at Christmas dinner with all of my friends of all places. That's so true. I right over my head. Audible. Audible books. Very good point. Well, I guess, I don't know, back in 1985. I guess audible books back in 1985 probably weren't as accessible as they are today. So you got, we are definitely blessed nowadays, right? Especially people that, you know, kind of go through those problems. Um... What yeah, what about, about the, the bookstore? bookstore? I've been going about my business as usual, first and foremost, because the deterioration is so gradual. Until I couldn't really do the little things anymore. Things like reading small print are getting difficult. Which was a painful thing to accept at first. Working in the bookstore is starting to give me more issues than I'd like. Getting older. It's a strange thing, isn't it? It's like that Robert Frost poem. The afternoon knows what the morning never suspected. Doesn't mean I wouldn't mind taking a little nap in between from time to time, though. I remember in school, they had like cassette tapes for books we would uh, listen to and read along. CD players we would have as well. It just blows sometimes. What the frick? I don't know if Thomas would say that. Um... Is this why you're really leaving for Georgia? I mean, will you be able to take care of yourself in the long run? 
It is a big part of why I'm leaving, yes. But at the same time, it isn't. That's true. The book, uh, the book fair. You go to the book fair. Get the book, uh, the book and the book and the book cassette bundle, right? How's that? What I'm trying to say is, when you really look at it, in the end, it's not all bad. You see, every limit is a beginning as well as an ending, as T.S. Eliot puts it. For me, there's really no use dwelling too much on that limit. I can't change it anymore at this point anyway. <clears throat> but I do have a choice in how to deal with it. Plus, Georgia has a lot to offer museums, social clubs, and... Most importantly, my family. If you look at it like that, getting older may still feel like a cursed time, surely. But I also see each new year as a gift. An opportunity to start new adventures, explore, and have more fun. You can't take something like that for granted. Hey, Merry Christmas, Dragon Knight and Matt and Dew. Merry Christmas to y'all. I feel a quote coming on. I feel a quote coming on. As soon as you feel too old to do a thing, do it. As Margaret Deland said. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> well, I guess Wonderful I really quote. should be going now. Thank you once again, Thomas. I do feel better now that it's out. You're a good friend. Any time, Beth. Bye now. When anytime we had like book fairs too, you would go to the book fair and then like you would want to buy it's even even like when you went to the library to rent a book or to borrow a book, I should say. Um you buy the book or you rent sorry, buy the book or borrow the book, either or. Any of the books that had like the gold medallion on the cover, that was like the cool thing to do back in the day. Like A. Hey, other classmates, my book has a gold medallion. This one's a banger. <laughs> you should uh, really check this out. <laughs> I forgot what those gold medallions were. What was it like? Like the, I don't know, uh, writer's choice book of the year. I have no idea. I can't remember what the gold medallions were. It's still a cool thing to do. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, Scholastic, Scholastic uh, Gold Medallion books. Yes, that, that, that's exactly it. Yeah. Like if you got that, you were the, you know, you were kind of a, a big deal. You were a cool kid. There we go. There you go. Put it in there. Hehehehe. <laughs> I'm like the worst driver in a town that doesn't even drive. <clears throat> and that's the last one. Whew. All right. Return back to the post office we go. And probably have to worry about what's going on with Frank. Tomorrow's going to be New Year's Eve. So we're very, very close to New Year's. Seasons greetings indeed. Oh. Thomas, you're drunk. Hey, Thomas, have you seen Jack? Uh, Jack, Jack, Jack. Yesterday night in my kitchen? Uh, no. How did it go with Morgan? Nope, I haven't, Frank. How did it go with Morgan? Didn't happen yet, but I need Jack to pull it off. I'm a sitting duck right now. I'm toast if Morgan suddenly shows up. Yeah, this this is before Meredith uh, came to stay. Maybe I can help out. Yikes! Maybe I can help out. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Sorry for interrupting your conversation, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Coleman. I see you've managed to be present at the job position you're currently holding. I think it's time you and I had a little chat inside the office. Mr. Morgan, it's so good to see you again. A little chat sounds uh, wonderful, but I'm afraid there's an extremely urgent parcel I have to deliver right now. So stay put and I'll be back in about 30 minutes. You can stay right here. 
Frank. I'm sure Mr. Weiss would be happy to deliver that package for you. Right, Thomas? Yeah, I'll finish my round. Let's go to Moe's and talk it all over like adults. Uh, if you think I do that, you're terribly confused. Um, I've got a better idea. Moe's? Let's just go to Moe's, have a few beers, and talk it all over like adults. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, sir? Hi. Hello. I, I heard you were looking for a guy in a light blue shirt with a mustache ah. to purchase illegal fireworks in the parking lot of the post office what a well, good guy you found him illegal fireworks who do you think i am sir you don't have to keep your guard up frank and thomas here both know me very well and i'm sure they won't tell a soul about what you're doing right now so what will it be i've got rockets roman candles fountains sparklers i even have barrages that'll give you a fireworks extravaganza that you won't ever forget I think there must be a misunderstanding here. Please, don't put Mr. Morgan in this position. If people walk by and see this, they, they might snitch on him and get him into trouble. He could even lose his job over this. Jack's a good guy. He's good people. Uh, why don't you go inside with all, without all these prying eyes? I don't think he's interested in buying fireworks. I don't think Mr. Morgan is interested in buying fireworks, to be honest. I'll tell you what will happen now. I'm going to get in my car, start the engine, drive home, <laughs> and pretend I did not just spend three days in Providence Oaks for absolutely nothing. Sir, if you take a left at the deer statue, you'll eventually pass my barn, and I can feel your trunk there in just one minute. Do you have cash on hand? Gentlemen, I'll be back next year. Frank Coleman... Your luck will run out one day. Ah. I wouldn't bet on it. Nice. Tally ho, Morgan. Will Morgan believe Jack was the one offering the fireworks? Great job, fellas. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Thanks, guys. I owe you one. Hey, cowgirl. Merry Christmas to you, cowgirl. Good to see you. Monday afternoon. Uh, hello? Evening, Thomas. It's Maureen. Maureen? Uh, hi, Maureen. Uh, if you're looking for Emily, she's at the motel right now. I, I was actually looking for you, Thomas. I, I don't know what to do with this Nancy situation. I get so worked up just thinking about it. That usually gets in the way of doing the right thing, you know. I need to talk to someone who's a bit more emotionally detached from the situation. How can I help you, Maureen? Mm. How can I help you, Maureen? Simply put, I don't know if I should give in to that Nancy Carlisle and her overpriced snacks, or tell that woman to take a hike. But then we'll end up with a lackluster New Year's Eve party. Risk New Year's Eve without snacks. Uh, a party is about having a good time with people you like. There you go. A party is about having a good yeah. time with people you like. Who cares if the snacks aren't great? That's what I'd like to think as well. But I just don't like to disappoint people. People should be glad you're throwing a party at all. People will understand that you had to draw a line. It may not be the perfect party, but people will understand that you had to draw a line in the sand. There you go. Hmm. I think you're on to something there, Thomas. I'm not yet totally sure what I'm going to do, but at least my mind's at ease now. Thanks for lending me your ear and advice. You're a doll. Takes one to know one. <laughs> it, it takes one to know one, Maureen. Oh, we absolutely are watching more TV. Got to put on the Magnum B. Maybe we should read a book. No, 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 no. Watch TV. There you go. I hate to admit it, Klaus, 
But if it wasn't for you, I would have been a goner. <laughs> you can't say that about the other guy. <laughs> you betcha. You made a mess, man. Blood and guts everywhere. It's not the first time I've made Schweinbraten without cooking. <laughs> what the heck is Schweinbraten? Mm -mm -mm. Tuesday, December 31st. Okay, very well. This is it. New Year's Eve. Good morning, P.O. I'm starting today with the weather forecast. It will be bright and beautiful. Which brings us to the last P.O. positive or pet peeve of the year. It's one from yours truly. Who'd like to end 1985 on a positive note? P.O. positive or pet peeves? We all know P.O. Is the best place in the world, and it's of course all because of the people. Is he going to talk about my people? I mean, most of the prank, people, the majority, more than half in any case. So, thank you for that, and let's keep it up. I've got a feeling 1986 will be a special year, and I can't wait for it to roll on. Stay safe out there today and tonight. Have a good one. Cheers. Back to the music. All right, never mind. He doesn't say anything about what happened in the parking lot. Very well, that's fine. Fancy hand. Keep his identity. Okay, here we go. Oh god, I really parked well like that's fine. I don't know. It's kinda like uh the oh god, what is this 108? They, I don't know if anybody's ever seen like the designs for the new, um, I guess, I don't know. I think they're called, I don't know what they're called, but there's like the new, new soon to be United they States must be out of town for the holidays. post office vehicles coming in the future. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen them, but they look so, look, they, they, they're, they're, uh, mechanically speaking probably they're an upgrade to what the mail trucks are currently like the what the mail carriers uh use now but they look so they look so silly <laughs> you know? it looks so silly if you don't if you've never seen them you should definitely look up like new um new usps it's trucks because I think they're coming soon. I just don't know what year. I don't know if they're going to be all electric either. That I'm not sure. They look like something out of like Dr. Seuss or something. That's how you park the game. Uh, park the van. You just throw it right up on the curb there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. How much is this game? Um... I'm not sure how much the game is. I don't remember. Um, and I'm not sure how much the DLC is either. But this is the DLC that we're playing right now. You saw the trucks? They look funny for sure. They do. They look really funny. They look so silly. I think I might would I think I would be kind of a little bit embarrassed if I had to drive those. They, I, I think the thing that they, they look funny and I think I, I, it'd be kind of like maybe embarrassing maybe to drive them. Who knows? Maybe the, the mock-up will change in the future, but um, long overdue, the USPS definitely needs new vehicles. But um, I think the reason why it would look silly is because it would look so abnormal to everything else on the road. Like there would be nothing that would really compare to a that kind of like vehicle it would look it would stand out big time I feel like you would come from another country driving them yeah exactly mm -mm -mm. watch out fox ah mm -mm -mm. All right, we'll go to Marines. Moe's Diner. I think Marine also has a little bit of a sad story, a little bit of a sad backstory. This diner has a little bit of a sad backstory as well. 
Thank you for saving the foxes. No a problem. Christmas gift? Maybe. A belated Christmas gift. A belated. Hello, Mo or Marie. Thomas, it's good to see you. Thanks again for the little chat we had yesterday evening. We well, haven't seen our wife in some time. Uh, don't mention it. Don't mention it, Maureen. I was glad to help. I think I've made the right decision. But I guess some situations don't have a perfect solution. You'll find out tonight, Thomas. We'll have a grand old time regardless. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and then it looks like our last postal package not a uh, letter but our last package might be over towards robert potentially or maybe at the motel motel or robert can't tell this one's definitely going to jack ah! Ah! what have i done Save the fox, kill the fence. That's right. That's what we do over here. <laughs> hey, Pandy, how are you? Good to see you. Oh, the news people are over here. Oh, it might be the Tux. You're right. It's New Year's Eve. It is the Tux, huh? You're true. You're, you're, you're true about that. It is at the motel then. Motel and the Tux. You're right. You're right. Oh, hey, Thomas. We're about to do a little interview, but you're welcome to listen in. Mr. Price, you know Thomas Weiss, don't you? Sure do. You're resident mailman, am I right? Oh, come Good on. Good to see you, man. You know who I am. Don't mind me. I'll just be a, a fly on the wall here. Hi, guys. Uh, don't mind me. I'll just be a fly on the wall here. That was Open Sky by Velvet Moon, one of my favorites. Folks, we have a special treat for you today because I have a guest here at the Reynolds studio. You know that happens from time to time, but today it's a bona fide big shot. None other than KNW6's own newsman extraordinaire, Mr. Connor Price. Thanks for having me, Jack. Always nice to talk to a fellow broadcaster. So, how long have you been doing this local show? Coming up on our 10th anniversary, Mr. Price. But you've been at KNW6 for longer than that, no? Yeah, yeah, it's been... Gosh, <laughs> can you believe I started there way back in 66? As a segment producer on Portland Rise and Shine. Still remember the title of my first item, too. Is Poplin still poppin'? <laughs> That's a great title. And yet, this is the first time you've come to Providence Oaks. First time staying a while at any rate. Uh, so, Mr. Reynolds, how would you describe this town? Hmm, well, I'd say it's a... Hey, 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 wait a minute. Who's interviewing who here? I'll ask the questions, thank you very much. <laughs> Apologies, my friend. Just can't help myself always chasing the story, me. It's the commitment I've made to our viewers. The price guarantee. So, what stories are you chasing here in P.O.? Oh, you know, just trying to capture the old couleur locale. Couleur. I must say, the people here are very friendly. And I hope the feeling's mutual. Right, Thomas? <laughs> That's Thomas the mailman over there. But never mind. He's not miked. Well, Mr. Price, we did get off to a rough start. Yeah, let's, 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 let's throw him under the bus. Well, Mr. Price, we did get off to a rough start. Hmm, you don't say. There you go. Because we happen to have a little section called P.O. Positive or Pet P. Yeah. Have I heard of it? Can't say I have, but I do like the alliteration. Hmm. Well, Lucinda Boyle called in a pet peeve yesterday, saying you were quite rude to her when she asked you for an autograph. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure that was a misunderstanding. Uh, see, I must have been on a really tight schedule because otherwise I'd do anything for a fan. That's the price guarantee, right? Sure. Anyway, we'll be back with Connor Price, KNW6 star reporter, right after this.
What the hell, Jack? Ambushing me like that live on air? Relax, just joshing you a little. But I'll let you plug the heck out of this Oregon Trail thing you're filming. How's that? We'll make sure everyone in town fully cooperates with your crew in the home stretch. Aha, uh -huh. well, speaking of the home stretch, I better get back to my job as a serious broadcaster. Ooh. It's been real, pal. Can you believe this guy? Ooh. Sheesh. Someone in broadcasting being slightly obnoxious? You just had the j full Jack Reynolds experience? Don't take it personal, Mr. Price. Jack's a swell guy. Don't take it personally, Mr. Price. Jack's a swell guy. Huh. That's the thanks I get for stopping by amateur hour. Oof. Ouch. <laughs> uh, sorry you had to witness that, Thomas. Made for good radio, though. While it lasted, anyway. I'll see you at most tonight, yeah? You don't want to miss what Frank's been cooking up. Can't wait to see you there. Can't wait. See you there. All right, let's go. All right. Tuxedo, letter, New Year's Eve, party. Yeah, check, check, an actual check. Let's do it, shall we? Uh, I've lost all sound in my, um, in my van, my truck. Must have, uh, went out when I slammed into that fence. So we'll just, uh, you know, we'll just listen to my voice, unfortunately, and the music going on in the background. Whew. Santa's coming to town. Santa. Every time I, every time I hear Santa, uh, I think of Elf. I think of uh, Will Ferrell. That's an instant classic. That's a. Good, I think that's one of Danielle's favorite Christmas movies. Is Elf. I had to pick a favorite Christmas movie. I don't know. I really, I mean, I really like Christmas Story. Yeah, I do. I do like a Christmas Story it, 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 tradition, right? But like, I don't know which one. If I had to choose one Christmas movie, it might be, might be Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Might be that one. If I had to choose only one, I feel like that's like the most Christmassy type movie. There you go. Hey, who that dude? How's it going? Maybe the volume knob fell off. Okay, let's get this to its destination. Hey, Maya, how are you? Talk to Matt. I should have a new booking system ready in a few weeks. Oh. Okay. That's not... Okay, right. Door two, right? Yeah, door two. Tuxedo! Tuxedo delivery! P.O. Tuxedo service. P.O. Tuxedo service. Yeah, I do hmm. like... He's not in. I like the first Santa Claus, the second one. I do not like the third one. Santa Claus 2 is pretty good, too. Probably, I like number two probably better than number one, but yes. I leave it with Elsa. Maybe I could leave it at the reception, I guess. Maybe if I hang it on the doorknob. No, we're not hanging it on the doorknob. Leave it at the reception, I guess. I could leave it at the reception, I guess. Let's do that. Nah, better leave it with Elsa. Or Room that. Nine. Yo, are they going to be together in there in room nine? They're going to be together, aren't they? We're going to catch them in the act. Here we go. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Hi, Thomas. Oh, is that Gabriel's tux? Signed, sealed, delivered. That's the Weiss guarantee. <laughs> okay, I'll take care of it. What's going on? Thanks. Uh, right then, I'll... I'm feeling fine, I'm feeling strong. It won't take long. Ooh, when I lose my witchcraft. Ooh, ooh, ooh. When I lose my witchcraft. Ooh. Ha <laughs> ha! 
See, someone's having a happy new year. Well, great. So. <laughs> <laughs> See you tonight at the diner. Oh, and thank you. My pleasure, Ilsa. Is she gonna take a shower next, or did she already take one? Very well. How funny. So good. People sound better in the shower. When I use my witchcraft. Oh, oh, Bella got a bone. Oh, Bella was given a bone. Oh, she came in here to show off. Did you get a bone, Bella? See, the thing about her Wonka doll, she has her Wonka doll in here. And she only went for one thing out of the, well, she went for the squeaker in her, out of her Wonka doll. But she also... She, she went for the left eyeball of Wonka. So the entire left eye is like torn off. The rest of the body is intact. So I don't know what that is all about. Excuse me, not the left eyeball. The right eyeball is torn out. Everything else, just fine. Hats good, hair's good, coat's good, cane's good, pants good, shoes are good. Even the little golden bow is good. The only thing that's not good is the right eyeball. That's it. Have a good one, Tabby. Merry Christmas. Have a good rest of your day. Enjoy your day. The question is, does Wonka have a willy? I'm sorry, is that a, are you happy to see me or is that a willy in your pants? I think he might have, he has no willy. No willy indeed. The last delivery of 1985. A momentous occasion to be sure. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I never thought of it that way. Mailman. The last delivery of 1985. The last delivery of the year. Maybe I looked at her wrong. That's true. Whoop. All right. Let's go enjoy New Year's Eve now. Here we go. Wish me luck. Is that Meredith? Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's the Weiss family again. We wanted to wish you a happy new year before we're going to Moe's. Hey, thanks. We've got a little over an hour left here before it's 1986. <laughs> You'll watch out for those fireworks, won't you? They're so unpredictable. I will. I'll probably stay inside anyways. We've got four more hours to go, but... Happy New Year! <laughs> I'd rather be early than late. Hey, Faz. Happy, Merry Christmas to you. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, are you going anywhere to celebrate? Uh, are you going anywhere to celebrate? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. We're all a bit drained after making the deadline. Some guys from the office were going to do a Yi'ar Kung Fu tournament, but I didn't feel like it. What? A Kung Fu tournament? On New Year's Eve? That's so weird. <laughs> yes, Mom. It's a video game. Oh, right. But Tess and I are going to watch Trading Places instead at my place. I think that New Year's Eve is overrated anyway. People seem to think it must be the best night of the year, but all you usually get is a lot of drama and a solid hangover. Facts. My New Year's resolution was not to make a big deal out of New Year's Eve anymore. And it looks like I'm not going to break it. <laughs> But um, don't let that ruin your evening. Okay, we should stop with the New Year resolution. Let's be honest here. Stop it. No more. Let's quit lying to ourselves. Let's just not lie to ourselves at the beginning of the New Year. Stop. I totally understand you, Meredith. My best New Year's Eve was actually one I spent all by myself. 
I don't know why, but that night, I've never felt more at peace. And most parties aren't worth the hangover anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's because you usually forget half of what happened. <laughs> Sorry, Meredith. Your father's memory needs a little grease between the hinges. <laughs> like starting the car in time before going to Moe's? <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> okay, guys, I won't hold you up. Have a great evening and a happy new year. Love you. They are Meredith's parents. Who would say it's the Wise family? The reason why they said it's the Wise family is because, um... My beautiful people, may I'll tell I you have here your in a attention for half a minute? First of all, welcome to Moe's. We're excited to celebrate the last few moments of 1985 together with you. It was quite an undertaking to host this New Year's Eve party at the last minute. So if you feel like the snack situation isn't up to standard, you're right. But we do have enough tater tots, french fries, potato wedges, and potato pancakes to feed the entire village. Thank you so much for that, Jack. Potato and thank wedges. thank you all for coming. Cheers to a great evening. Well, if it isn't my oh, look favorite at them. KNW6 news team. They look nice. In the flesh. Hi, Thomas. Uh, the reason why they said Wise's family is because... Uh, they feel like she's a stranger since she's so busy to come spend uh, the holidays with her uh, family, is why. Um, nice tuxedo, Gabriel. I've had this witchcraft song stuck in my head all day. Yes. Darndest thing. I've had this song stuck in my head all day. It goes, mm -hmm, witchcraft. Ooh. ooh, ooh. Witchcraft. Ooh. <laughs> what a coincidence. That's been stuck in my head, too. He knows. He heard you sing it in the shower. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elsa Richter, ladies and gentlemen. Segment producer, car problem solver, and joke explainer extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Champagne for my real friends and real pain for my sham friends. Oh my God. Good to see you, man. Yeah, we'll do that. Kind of give him a taste of his own medicine. Ah, good to see you, man. So is the segment on Providence Oaks in the can yet? Almost, my friend. Still have to shoot the countdown to the new year. Hopefully that gives us the ending we need. I've been promised a spectacle. Easy on the alcohol there, Connor. We still need you on camera. Can't have you slurring your words. Slurring my words? Whatever do you mean, Ilsa? Quit fooling, you guys. It's getting close to midnight. Let's set up and get ready. All right, here Showtime. we go. Midnight, okay. coming up. Getting into character. See you on the flip side, mailman. Hi, honey. Ugh, there goes that Connor Price. Would you believe the motel had to custom order a blow dryer just for him? Oh my god. He generously though. Oh, is that Beth sitting over there? Let's join her. Good evening, my dearest of friends. Almost time for Old Lang Syne, eh? Did you know that Old Lang Syne was written down by Robert Burns in the 18th century? And that he based it on an old Scottish folk song? He wrote it to a different melody than the one we sing today, but... I have to say, I do like this version. And it's often sung after a special dinner where haggis is served. Would you haggis. believe? Freaking haggis. Uh, how will we ever get get by without these fascinating facts? Hey, Nat. How are you, Nat? Good to see you. Honestly, Beth, I don't know how we'll get by without these fascinating facts when you're gone. Well... I will still be selling sets of encyclopedias at the store for a few more months if you need them. I'll cut you a nice deal. Mm. <laughs> Only if you'll help load them into my truck. All joking aside, my friends, now that a new year is upon us, I feel a moment of thanks is in place. I know I've kept my situation from you for a while, but now that it's out in the open, I honestly don't know why I didn't share it with you sooner pride i suppose but i feel so much better now so thank you my friends that's what we're here for 
That's what we're here for. Glad we could be there for you, Beth. And thank you for opening us to us. We'll always be there for you. But you have to let us in first. I hope you'll remember that when you're in Georgia. Definitely. In fact, it's my new resolution for 1986. Along with letting go and seeing where life takes me. What about you, Emily? Any no, no, resolutions? No, 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 no. Well, less work and more fun, I suppose. I guess so. Now that this guy Matt is joining the motel, I am looking forward to a bit more quality time. What about you, honey? Hmm. A long holiday might be nice. I'd like to head out to Meredith next year. Another year with you is all I could ever hope for, dear. Bingo. Another year with you is all I could ever hope for, dear. Oh, I love you too, Big Bear. Oh, Big Bear. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Well, whatever the future brings, this old acquaintance here will be hard pressed to ever forget you two. <laughs> I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm sure we're memorable in a good way. So are you, dear Bethy. And like you said at Christmas dinner, even if the reasons for change are sometimes out of our hands, let's focus on the new beginnings that come along with them. Hmm? And what better time for new beginnings than New Year's Eve? Attention, folks! It's showtime! Oh, God. If you want to see the biggest fireworks yes. show west of the Rocky Mountains, you better be standing outside in about 10 minutes. Yes! That's my cue. From a little spark may burst a flame. As Dante once put it. Dante from Clerks? But I need to visit the ladies' room first or I'll turn into a pumpkin. See you outside. <laughs> Isn't she marvelous? I'm so happy for her. But I am going to miss Bethy. So will I. Parcels for the bookstore is always bright in my mood. She'll still be around for a while. Uh, we'll just go along with it. Seeing a parcel addressed to the bookstore always brighten my mood. Hmm. It makes me feel a bit melancholic. Even more than I usually am on New Year's Eve. This odd feeling of looking back and forward at the same time. And now I'm doing that over a much longer period than just the coming and going of the year. I know what you mean. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's good to have something to look forward to. And we sure have something to look forward to, don't we? I guess that's what's most important in life. But let's enjoy the here and now instead. Our wise and beautiful daughter just taught us not to demand that this should be the best evening of the year. But we're allowed to try it, right? So this is where my speech ends, my dear husband. And now I need a glass of champagne. I'll drink to that. Uh, and to you. And all the good things the new year will bring us. Maureen, I need champagne. For me and my beautiful wife. Oh. You got it, sir. Just grab your glasses and join me in the bottle outside. It's less than a minute now. That was the quickest 10 minutes of my life. 20 seconds on go, Mr. Price. Go. And so 1985 draws to a close. With mere seconds left in the year, I've been told this little lake town will strive to end 85 with a bang. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Holy Toledo! Ilsa, are we getting this? Sonova! Somebody check on Frank! Oh, crap! Oh no. And that sure sounds like a delicious eggnog recipe. <sighs> Hurry up, dear. It's coming up next. Yes, yes, don't get too excited now. It's just a preview, remember? And now, a man with a very special New Year's resolution. No. And he's going to tell us all about it. Isn't that right, Sybil? Absolutely, Bob. It's none other than our roving reporter, Connor Price. Are we going to pretend like nothing Connor, happened? Connor, my dear, where in blazes are you? 
Well, Sybil, I'm in beautiful Providence Oaks, wishing you and Bob and our viewers a joyful 1986. And as for my New Year's resolution, Bob, why, it's my very special price guarantee to all of you that I will be sharing gripping tales and intimate portraits from all over Oregon in an all-new series of special reports on small-town America. Part 1 will air tonight at 8, right here on KNW6. And it will be all about the gorgeous little lake town where I was fortunate enough to spend the waning days of 1985. Here, let's take a look at an exclusive sneak peek. Fireworks? Providence Oaks, an idyllic town by a lake just south of Melville. It's where this reporter counted down to 1986. And although, unfortunately, the fireworks started a little early, so we didn't quite manage to catch them on tape, take it from me, it was quite the spectacle, courtesy of postal worker Frank Coleman. I wanted to see it! Just a faulty batch of leftover 4th of July material, I guess. <laughs> Not mine, anyway. No, no siree. But I'm all right, folks. Really, everyone can stop calling me at home. I'm A-OK. -okay. And perhaps that encapsulates the true nature of Providence Oaks, or P.O., as it's called by those who know and love it. It's a town where, even when things don't go as planned, folks will be all right and A-OK. -okay. It's just, you know, we help each other out and there's nothing we can't fix. A town where first impressions can be deceiving. This town may look sleepy from the outside, but trust me, there's always so much stuff to do and take care of, ugh. A town where generations have grown up. It's a great place to raise kids and also a, a great place to um, have been raised as a kid. Uh, myself, I mean. <laughs> Back when I was a kid, being raised here. <laughs> uh, was that okay? A town where patience is still a virtue. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure if this is where I'll find what I'm looking for. But I do know I can keep looking here for as long as I want. And that feels great. A town full of unique individuals that, deep down, have more in common than you'd think. The average Providence Oakian probably doesn't exist. We do tend to keep to ourselves until someone needs us. Then we show up. Always. A town you can't help but love. You know, I just think it's the best place in the whole wide world. <sighs> Sue me. <laughs> and where everyone has a story to tell. To me, it's all about the people because yes well leave it to the mailman to say it he best. cut off jack this is home indeed providence oaks like so many other places in our great state of oregon is a small town with a big heart this is connor price KNW6 PO Store manager slash chain smoker. Thank you for playing. No problem. No problem. Yeah, I like we build up the whole anticipation for the fireworks to happen and like we all that and we didn't even get the fireworks, unfortunately. Now, this is uh the DLC of Lake It's Seasons Greetings. I will have to say, if this was your first time seeing this or you're catching the end of it and you're really interested in lake to play for yourself the game is a lot longer or the the base game is a bit longer than the dlc i wouldn't normally say this but if you are interested in playing these the this game for the first time honestly i would play season's greetings first the dlc which you can switch between here between lake classic and season's greetings just like that i would play season's greetings first and then i would play lake after it because season's greetings is before and you get that kind of backstory of what's going on with with meredith and all that and you know and then like florida eventually and then boom you can see the rest of the story and there are choices and there are different outcomes in this game 
Uh, there is romanceable characters in this game as well, too. So you can choose who you want to romance as Meredith. But uh, this has been really cool. Nice little DLC that they dropped on us for like a uh, big shout out to White Thorns for sending me a key over to do this DLC and to play this this season, uh, this, you know, this holiday season. Very nice game. Very nice segue into the Christmas uh, season. So Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Hopefully you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thank you very much for all the people that did the massive support. Thanks for the subscribers. Thank you for the super chats, for the memberships. I really do appreciate that. And I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and uh, all that good stuff. I will be back on the day after Christmas. I will not be streaming tomorrow, obviously, for because it's Christmas. But uh, I will be back after Christmas and we'll be uh, continuing some more House Flipper and some Coral Island. So hopefully I'll see you then. All right. Till next time, do take care.